I will pretend. Pretending is for fun. I've got my babies. This is Sun Baby. And this is Green Baby. They're my two babies. I get it. Sun Baby and Green Baby. The only babies that anybody needs. So is it is it now starting? Is it thing? Yeah, I mean, it is, we're it already is. we're already okay. started. Oh. I, I tweeted. Okay. I don't, I don't know about you guys. Nope. I don't, I don't actually know tweet, where Tim. to. Oh, yeah, I see it now. I don't know where to see our viewer count. Uh -oh. oh, it's it's up at the top. It's right it? up there. You've oh, got to close the thing. Yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah. One viewer. Okay. There will be it, more. It's probably me. Oh, actually, it might be me. I, I have it open too. Well, I have it open as well, so it should be wow. three. Actually, I didn't have it open. Okay, so and it I, should have been two. Now I do have it open. Let's well, see what about that. Let's see. We <coughs> now have. Okay, I'm oh, still man. showing. I'm still so, showing one viewer. It'll, 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 it'll. It just give it a minute. You, yep. You've seen it. What it does with comments. It, it takes. I, a I have. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awful. Um, so I'm going I, to. I, Quickly uh, feed my cat before we start broadcasting. Go so for it. I'm going to talk about this domain sale. I tried to buy a domain, yeah, and I I offered a hundred dollars, and I got an auto response from the people selling the domain that was a, uh, or from the website handling it that was like domains, premium domains such as this one typically go for fifty thousand or more dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, that was like five days ago, so I just got an email again from the domain name service saying, you offered $100, somebody else just offered $200, and I'm like, that's uh no, nobody would want this stupid URL that I was trying to buy, uh, which leads me to believe that there's some sort of scam happening on the internet, is, is what I believe. I believe the internet might have scams on it is what I have concluded. I don't think that that is possibly true. That could not happen. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm going to do a full <laughs> investigative report <laughs> okay. and, figure, and figure out. <clears throat> yeah, they're there, scams. Heck yeah, guys. Heck, maybe. Let's I'm pretty tired. Yeah, me too. When did, when did you get back from that country you were in? Last night at 11 p.m. after a 24-hour journey. That Actually, was a, it was it was only twenty three hours. Twenty three? That's not that bad. That's nah. less than a day. Journey doesn't yeah. take that long. It takes like four hours to get through. What? You said journey. it was a twenty four hour journey, and I made a joke because there's a video, it was a video game, game journey. Called yeah. Journey. I forgot about that one. Yeah, it won some awards, I think. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I had a seven hour layover in Munich. And so I actually, like, got off the train. I mean, got off the, uh, got, I left the airport, got on a train, and went and ha hung out with a dude that lives in Munich, and then came back to the airport. And that was way better than just sitting in there because they have no free Wi-Fi in the Munich airport because in Germany, they are afraid that if you have free Internet, you're going to download porn with it. <laughs> or hack all the ROMs, and so not the ROMs, no. <clears throat> uh, man, ROM hacking is definitely a huge airport epidemic. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so they don't. There's, there's a lot of it going. They on. don't let you. They don't let you do it, and you can only like you can pay fifty euro cents um, to to friggin' the, wait. Do I have fifty here? Yeah. Oh, are you gonna that's, hold up the? That's, the that's this much money. Currency. I don't actually have a fifty. Uh, on me because I spent it using the internet. <laughs> uh, you have to spend it, and then uh, you get this. You have to type on this gross community keyboard that everybody else has wiped their balls on. And not only that, the Z and the Y are ha have a switched position on a German keyboard. But man, German keyboards are just nuts. They're they're not as bad as um, as French, but they're. They're just off enough that you 
instead of typing an apostrophe, you type an O with an umlaut over it. <laughs> yeah. Which can actually kind of look like an apostrophe. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, sort of, but it's it's pretty funny. It's not, but in France, they have that azerty oop instead of qwerty oop. Hey, Frank, do you want to go to, do you want to go to Target after the podcast? I can't today. Oh, that's too bad. But I kind of do want to, but I can't. It sucks to be you. Man, I want to go to sleep forever. Is that cool? I want to do that too. Just try and <clears throat> stay up until 10 p.m. and then uh, you'll you should I don't know. Whoa! We just got a sudden surge in viewers. Uh, so whatever you guys did at work, we have 46 at this point. So uh, 46, huh? I am ready to start this broadcast when y'all are. Oh, that's honking on down Honk Street. Let's honk on <laughs> to Honk Street. Okay. Broadcast the ho- the broadcast the podcast. I honk cast the broad pod. I will honk cast the broad the broad pod. <laughs> honk casting In- broad pod. All right, you guys ready? In three, two, <laughs> just do it. Hello, well, come on, man. I, you know it was funny the first forty-one times when you, when you interrupted Tim. The, the, oh. the, but but we're on number forty-two now. It's time to get serious. Ooh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Insert Credit Podcast. I am uh, Frank Zavaldi, your temporary host, as Alex Gorblax Jaffe is uh, off having a birthday or something. Right? Well, well, wait a second. Insert Pettit Crodcast is what we could call this episode. Since it's, <laughs> we could. Since, since, since it's sort of twisted. Since everything mm-hmm. is just slightly wrong today. The, the Insert Pettit Crodcast. <laughs> Crodcast. <laughs> All right, so uh, joining me as always is uh, Tim Rogers. Hi, Tim. That's me. I've got my babies. I've got Sun Baby and Green Baby right here. Your only viewers of the live stream know what that means. And if you want to know who these sun babies baby. are, Sun Green baby, baby and Green Baby, you got uh, you'll, you'll have to tune into our live broadcast, which happens, well, typically on Wednesdays, but it is Thursday. Yeah, we, we like to keep people on their toes. We are doing it on Thursday today because Thursday is NBC Must See TV Seinfeld uh, and Friends Day from the 90s. That's right. It's, it's That's in uh, tribute to that. It's a, it's, a, it's a commemoration. Also with me is Brandon Sheffield. Hello, Brandon. Hello. I'm reading up on some Polish makeup tips from this more book that I bought. More like Shandon Breffield. Yeah, <laughs> it's more like that. <laughs> So Brandon, uh, you just came back from Poland. Uh, what what are the video games like in Poland? They don't have them. No, uh, it was they got some video games over there. They have a lot of game companies that are making things. Right. And uh, now, and the thing is, I I realize, man, that country is pretty cheap to live in, and they pay people accordingly. So heck just, yeah. Just thinking about that, you could make a pretty good, pretty cheap video game over there, because they're, they're no slashes when it comes to making things. Like, they got they got that Dead Island, which I like. They have Two Worlds. That's a whole mm. Bioware-style RPG, except not quite as good. And they've got other stuff that's pretty impressive. So, uh, and it... <clears throat> a friend of mine who lives there was calculating that for the entire year, he could live pretty comfortably for the entire year spending $7,000. Seven thousand dollars to live a year in Poland. Does that include uh, rent? Yes, I was in his what? apartment, and he he's got a a nice little one bedroom apartment. Um, it's nothing big or fancy, but it's got its own kitchen and everything, and wow. uh, it has a really nice view from the third floor of a Jewish cemetery. It's actually really pretty. Um, oh heck yeah! And uh, and I will tell you that it costs one hundred and forty dollars per month. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's like walking it's 15 minutes walking distance to the center of the city the the units that Brandon and I live at uh the ones that have occasionally become vacant uh rent for more than 10 times that that's right so more than 10 times more than 10 times your friend my my apartment is about exactly 10 times that yeah, yeah. so Poland's pretty cool is i think the conclusion here so uh, you could also move to Shanghai for a similar deal Maybe you, I will. You, you can work at Spicy Horse. You can be the spiciest horse of all. Yep. The horse, horsey spice. My horsey life. spice. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite Spice Girl. Yeah. So our regular viewers know how this work. Uh, how this works. Excuse me. Um, but for those You're who fired. don't, how these works. 
Yeah, how it work? You know um, how it work. You know how it work. But for those who don't, uh, the Intercredit Podcast very simple premise: uh, we go through nine topics for six minutes each and try to reach a conclusion as a group. At the end, there's a lightning round, and uh, if you're tuning in live, we do a little Q and A hangout sort of thing at the uh, conclusion of the broadcast. If you're listening uh, to the podcast audio only version, y'all are missing out. Y'all are really missing out on yeah, us, uh, being idiots for a while. Big fun at the end of this whole thing. It's a regular sized fun. So uh, our, our regular host, uh, Alex Jaffe, is out. So uh, rather than having one person asking all nine questions, we are going to alternate. And uh, we're going to begin with me, actually, as soon as I put on these Google effects so I can uh, do some uh, sounds because sounds are awesome. Scream! Google goggles. Google goggles. Go- put on your Google goggles. You guys ready to hear a sound? Check that out. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> that sounded like a cash register. Is that what that was? That what was a cash register. That. That's one of the Google Do sounds. Do I win? Okay. Are you all ready for question number one? Or no, but I am, number one, I should No, say. but I am ready for this. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. Just get, <laughs> just, let's just keep it going. All right. So topic number one. Yeah. Extol the virtues of vehicle-based deathmatch multiplayer. Vehicle-based deathmatch multiplayer. What you mean, like what with that um, metal twisted metal twisted? Yeah, that's 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 one game that does that. That's true. Uh, I I played that game when I was at a Sony event in um what what's that place called Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and it was uh c- quite a revelation for me because I'm certainly not going to say that I'm very good at video games. Uh, I I think that everyone can attest to the fact that I'm uh mediocre at best when it comes to playing video games that require skill. And, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, um, I was playing this this new Twisted Metal that they had, which seemed okay. But I, I as much... The most Twisted Metal I had played before that was about an hour of it in the PlayStation era. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, I didn't really like it very much, and etc. So Wait. then I played this against, you know, uh, 16 other journalists... All everyone's playing all deathmatch eight versus eight, and uh, my team won, and I had the highest ranking. Wow! And, uh, and I was like, "Well, that's how bad everyone in game journalism is at playing video games. They're actually worse than me, who already sucks." The end. That's actually not what I would have expected from that scenario. I would have expected that all the journalists like the really bad game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They, they maybe they were busy with the first persons and the shooters. Uh, that's true. Maybe they um, know that better. But I know might, that the. Uh, oh. I yeah. was just gonna say they might also have to play so many things that they can't get deeply into anything. And maybe I, I feel like the the when I look at uh, video game websites, usually accidentally, usually I fall down the stairs and I my face hits the keyboard. And, oh no. Mm-hmm. It lands on IGN or whatever. Like usually, well, I guess IGN is cool with it. But uh, <laughs> anybody who's who's not IGN, who who any any website with a superiority complex to IGN, uh, uh, whether vocal or not, they they always seem to have this cynical attitude about FPSs or competitive multiplayer games. Like, well, another FPS for people who like that sort of thing. So I would assume that a uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is the Nintendo fanboys run the video game journalism industry. Okay, I don't know if anybody <laughs> knew that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, Twisted Metal was originally pitched internally at Sony as Super Mario Kart Battle Mode for adults. So I guess they've just probably been cynical. You know, I'm an adult. I can enjoy Mario Kart. Like they've probably been cynical about it forever. Yeah, you guys got a dinosaur. I've got like a clown that kills people and is on fire or whatever, yeah. So what I'm saying is a vehicle, like a vehicle in a video game is vehicle. just a, a cool thing. In real life, vehicles are cool, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, they're more interesting than walking around. Why am I going to put a video game disc into my video game data disc player machine on my television and imagine that I'm a guy walking around? Isn't it more fun to imagine I'm riding some fantastic vehicle, right? Isn't that just inherently more fun? Doesn't it just kind of logically follow that it's going to be more fun to be a vehicle-driving dude? Well, what about being a fantastic guy? 
I don't want to be a fantastic person <laughs> in a video game. Really? I mean, a person with a gun, I guess that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because I'm not one of those in real life. Yeah, that's what I'm but, saying. I mean, what's, I, what's, what's the difference between being a guy you can't be and being a vehicle that you also can't be? Is it Faster. There's a thing about action. Well, what if you're the faster. Flash? What if you're the Flash with a gun? <laughs> We're talking about vehicle-based action. So the right. Flash with a gun would be cool. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. You Also, don't you want to be bigger? In games, don't you want to be like a, a big giant? This is like where the giant robot fantasy comes uh, from. You, Tim, as someone who grew up fat, um, I, no, I don't. I, I grew up fat as well, but I mean, don't you want to be like 50 feet tall? I grew up regular, and I don't want to be bigger either. Yeah. Uh, also, um, just D to that point, what, I'm, I was trying to think about what multiplayer um, vehicle combat games I liked, and there's that Moto uh, motor Rotor game on the. Oh, that's a hot one. On That's the PC engine, one. and and them cars is all real small, and and I don't actually feel big in that game at all. Cause you should though. It's all it's all zoomed out. I guess I f I feel big action wise, but I don't feel yeah, big. Yeah, that's 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 all it takes. Uh, human wise, but that's all it takes. You want big action. Yeah. Or go yeah. home. Go big action or go home action. <laughs> go big action or go big home. <laughs> go big home action. <laughs> I actually um. I don't know. I enjoy micro machines. I think I like being real little. Well, yeah, but that's that's a different thing. And that's all. Yeah, I mean, that's that's that's. We're talking vehicle. Our... We're talking vehicle combat. I'm not interested in vehicle combat. Okay, I, I'm <laughs> gonna admit that's, it. That's the topic here. Okay. Like yeah, in so... Twisted Metal, you've got guns and you can shoot the Eiffel Tower over. Yeah. That's cool. I do in hate Halo, the Eiffel Tower. In Halo, you've got. You can be riding in a in your vehicle, shooting out the window while another dude drives around. That's cool. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Uh, that I think we've even talked about this on the podcast before. That that vehicle that that character mod for GTA that has. Um, oh, the other animals. Yeah, elephant and a giraffe and stuff, driving around. That would be the best. I think so. I think the defense is. Um, vehicle combat games should have big animals in the cars. Uh, All right, let's do it. Or yeah. make the vehicles themselves animals. I think would also work, sort of yeah. like Ra Rambi and Donkey Kong sort of scenario. And, yeah. and like an elephant driving. Uh... Yeah. Bong. Twitter. I mean, Twitter. Treasure was gonna make that game, weren't they? <laughs> On the Dreamcast. Oh, the oh the Donkey Kong racing game. I forgot all about that. Yeah, I think that was Treasure, wasn't it? Well, no, no, not Donkey Kong. It was a... They oh, had like a, You're on Big Hamsters, and it was a treasure game. Hamsters? Action. Did you say hamsters? I did say hamsters. Do you not know about this game? Hamsters? I said it's hamsters. A, it sounded like hamsters. But yeah, yeah well, I, know, well, I, know, hamsters. I know about the game you're talking about. The P is cool. It's cool, man, whatever. There was a you Donkey know? Kong racing game with... Uh, Don't with hamper my hamster, all right? Oh, heck yeah, hamster. <laughs> All right, so one of you guys is asking the next question. Who will it be? Brandon. Okay. Brandon. Um, the question oh, that Jaffe has sent me, here is the first of those questions that he mm -hmm. has sent me. Let's it is it. as follows. Name a few categories you would add to the annual Guinness Book World of Records, Gamers Edition. Oh, oh God. Um, uh, no number of times word gamers is said in... Uh, in an article. In a single video game. Wait, so the, article. Does, does the Gamers Edition track game articles? I guess it must. It's just all things Probably. related to to uh, gamers. Well, yeah. uh, well, first of all, if I was editing this thing, I would change the S in gamers to a Z. Just yeah, to, I, uh, I was actually. Oh heck yeah, heck yeah. Most most clever use of uh, of Z in 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 game related Z or X in a game yeah. related title. Oh man, I would take both of them. <laughs> How about uh, uh, the uh, using a K for combat? Yeah, G game yeah. that uses a K in combat. Using it, using times. a number instead of a letter. And that that's one that's sponsored by uh, Warner oh, Brothers because only about... Mortal Kombat wins every year. Yeah. How about most gallons of Mountain Dew drunken <laughs> by a single gamer in? The year, and then another subcategory that's in one month in the one month period during the year. Yeah, it's probably gonna be the same guy. Most downs. No, you never know. You never I know. Think there it, are, it should, there it, are marathon runners and there yeah. are sprinters, Frank. <laughs> that's true. It There's should true. really be uh, <laughs> the the category should be called most do done. 
Most yeah. Dew, done. And yeah. then how about most Mountain Dew drunk during one consecutive gaming session? That could be another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like that's like the power lifter of doing. Do. Of do. Number of children food denied to while playing League of Legends. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Large, largest uh, financial sponsorship to an objective news website. How about largest League of Legends league? Oh, so like the yeah. like so that would be L L O L L. Lol. How about the most legendary Lol. League of Legends? <laughs> The most legendary, the, the largest legendary league. Of legends. Of legends league. In League of Leg uh, Legends, yeah. I'm trying to get the that, most consecutive It's L's. just la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> That's how me and my friend Stabo used to pronounce lol in public. We'd go lol. And because we were in Japan, I guess nobody got the joke. So they no. just kind of thought we were psychopaths. Maybe. For me, the first time I heard someone pronounce lol was um, French people French people I've told you this oh, before yeah. oh they they love doing that and it was it was pretty great because they're doing it all French style so they're like lul lul <laughs> lul I guess because when you think about it uh yeah oh man uh, one of the, I accidentally looked at the comments Tyler Doak says most unplayed sales on Steam that's a pretty good one person mm. who bought the most games and then never played them yeah that so that's the rich person's uh right Oh, there should there should actually be some categories for uh, in-app purchases and such. Well, yeah, I was gonna say for what we call them whales. Whales, in, yeah, yeah. In fattest the whale, fattest whale, yeah, fattest whale of the w year. White, whitest whale. We can make it racist and Big. also Ooh. Moby Dick. Or or we can uh, go kind of sexy with it and call it biggest Willie. Mm. Oh, that's a good Willie. Yeah, <laughs> biggest Willie style. <laughs> oh man, most uh, most. Uh, oh man, I had a really good one. <laughs> Most, l l largest? Uh, no, no, that's not good. <laughs> I was gonna say largest, largest. I was thinking, I was trying to think of something terrible. So I was gonna be like largest ammo clip on a gun in a video game released in in 2013. But and then it's a uh, the the category is restricted to guns with with limited ammo clips. Uh -huh. uh, How about uh, um, biggest but, biggest stockpile of we use in a retailer? Sure. Yeah, there you go. Most most nuns eviscerated. Mm. There, there you go. That's a good one. And uh, most most prostitutes murdered and then money retrieved from thereafter. Do mm. they have any like subjective categories in the gamers edition, like best blah, or is it? No, just... it's, uh, no, it's, it's just... okay. they all have to be measured. Yeah. Okay. So That's biggest exactly. Willie could definitely be measured. How yes. about a uh, most uh, video game company that released the most trailers with dubstep in them? Yes. Ooh, yeah. That's a, that's a good category. Well, that is. Uh, I mean, do, do they track just <clears throat> annual stats too? Because we could just have like you know. The, the 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 number of overall game trailers that had dubstep in yeah, them. Yeah, the there year. could be to date. There could be the year. Mm -hmm. You could really get a lot of mileage out of that. It could category. be like a, like a pullout poster with tiny thumbnails of each trailer. And yeah, there you go. The year in dubstep. <clears throat> and and it, should, it should be like a, it should be like those greeting cards that you open and it plays a sound. So you unfold yeah. the poster. It's like boop, 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 boop. yeah. 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 That's most yeah. most uh, uh, most zombies on screen simultaneously in a video game. Oh, there yeah. you go. People that, like that to one. Talk actually, sounds that. like that one sounds like it might already exist. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm sure there's a most zombies category. How most about, neck uh... beards at a video game developer. <laughs> oh man, there's some of those. Yeah. I think there's big, more, big, more... biggest layoff at a large games publisher. <laughs> Oh, there's a good one. I think I think there's more bros than neckbeards now, though. It's true. Um, most um, most audible breathing through mouth at a video game developer. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's a really hard one to track. Most I mean, lines of code typed uh, entirely by mouth breath. Most lines <laughs> of coke used to ship a video game. Yeah, most pounds of cocaine consumed in the production of. I I, I, w I want to admit something right now. I ended that two seconds early because I had a good punchline there. So. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's hot. I'm, I'm cheating. I, I'm, I'm cheating also timing, so, you know. Okay. Um, are, so you're, you're timing your own here. I mean, yeah, I'm going to do that is what I'm going to okay. do. 
So I'm going to start the question right now if y'all is cool with that. Okay. Punk. In the video game Final Fantasy VI, mm -hmm. the, the character Sabin is, uh, or Sabin, depending on how you pronounce it. It's, it's mash in Japanese, so the Japanese does not lend us any pronunciation uh, no. clues. So the Sabin is famously capable, and this is in one boss battle, and you don't have to have played the game to appreciate what I'm about to say. He is famously capable of suplexing a train, a locomotive engine. He can pick it up and suplex it on the ground, yeah. which is really ridiculous. So enumerate some of the other greatest feats of human strength in game characters now. So I, I was going to say, <laughs> immediately when I, I, I saw that question, which was just now, because I didn't look at them until now, uh, I thought of how Master Chief and Halo can flip over the Warthog just by touching the button. Like, he just, like, get, walks up to it, and then suddenly it'll just, like, flip over. He can flip it over with his mind. He can flip over a vehicle that has capsized with his brain. Yeah, that's, that's pretty true. powerful, yeah. That's not even like I mean the brain is a muscle so I guess it is using his muscles. The yeah. uh, the just cause two guy, um, whatever his name is, he can tether a train a plane to another plane and then make him fly in loops while he's riding on top of him. Yeah, that's is that a feat of strength or just awesomeness. There's there's strength oh, is it, part of is that. It strength? Yeah, well yeah. this strength involved because he's just standing on a moving plane. Yeah. Jumping. That's, that's a lot of strength, yeah. Is he jumping between planes? He does sometimes. Yeah, Ow. jumping between planes is basically like lifting 10,000 pounds with one Yeah, hand. that's really difficult. <laughs> that's, so. that's, that's, it's deceptively difficult. You look at, <laughs> you, you know, you, if you grew up an American like me, you know, I don't know if you can, you look at me and you're like, that guy's definitely a grew up American. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, you might have seen so many films that you have gained the impression that you could probably jump between a couple of airplanes. You know? Yeah. But uh, nope, you probably can't. You know, it's like I mean, you might just casually have that impression that you could just jump between them, but it's basically it's like getting hit in the face with the train. Which uh, I guess that's better than which suplexing. you would then have to pile drive. I mean, oh, he suplex. I'm sorry. Suplex, pile drive. You can actually do either one. <clears throat> he has a lot of different wrestling moves he can perform soup drive. on that train. Yeah, I want to uh, play a game called Soup Drive. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that in Bioshock Infinite, you have that that gauntlet that can hook on to those those rails, and then you can like ride around the city on them. Oh, that's some good upper body strength. That's, there, that's yeah. incredible yeah. upper body strength. Yeah. And the fact that you can just look up at them, point your crosshair at it, and then press the, the X button to latch on, like that, like he can jump like 80 feet straight up in the air, which that's crazy strength, you know, wow. and the fact that he hasn't dislocated his shoulder on, the, on, on any of those jumps, or broken his legs on the landings, because you can land like 50 feet and then it's like that brings that brings into question the whole Uncharted games. Like that was my biggest deal with uh, Tomb Raider. The original Tomb Raider was you were doing a lot of pull-ups in that game. Yeah. Like like <clears throat> lots of them. And Lara Croft just did not look like she could do like a hundred pull-ups. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger could do fifty pull-ups in one day max, as he said. You know, you you never want to do it with your own body weight. You know. It's like, I mean, come on. That's... Well, he's got a lot more body weight to deal with, though. That's true. Yes, that's true, but he also has more power and more flexibility, probably. Yeah, that's true. You'd look at a muscular person and think they're not flexible, but that's not true. Sometimes it's true. It is true sometimes. So, sometimes they can't even put their arms down. Mm -hmm. How flexible yeah, I think is that? They, I mean, yeah, that's, keep... why, that's why I'm not muscular. Uh, I'm Brandon, I, I, I'm putting I, my arms down. I, I hate to tell you this, Brandon, but what? the reason that... What? People who are muscular don't straighten their arms. Is that that's just what arms are supposed to look like when they're straightened? They they are straightened. They're just so no. curved with muscle that no. it looks like they're not straight. No, it's true. <clears throat> it's no. true. So um, uh, other feats of strength are people who can get shot hundreds of times and not die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All like the it, FPS guys in Gears of War with your re regenerating health. Uh, if you're playing the game on one life, it's possible that you were walking around with like. 
fifteen thousand pounds of bullets in your body. Well, and plus, like you know, if you're that's, getting shot straight on and you're able to just walk through it, that's a lot of strength. I mean, the, the, the impact of a bullet is going to throw you backwards. So if you're yeah. able to just walk through it, God, those guys are tough. That's really as a tough. as a as a Vietnam veteran who was for some reason in one of my Chinese classes in college, once told me in the parking lot after blocking my car uh, <laughs> with his. Uh, you know, and then started up a conversation. He's like, you know, if you shoot somebody in the fingertip from 200 yards away with an M16, it's going to rip their arm out of their socket. You know, he's like, if you hold your arm out like this. And I'm like, really? Did you ever test that? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so he's like, and that's why I'm blocking you in, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if you, if you shoot somebody's fingertip, it's gonna blow their arm out of the socket. It's like, so I guess all video game characters are are capable of incredible forward velocity yeah. if they can uh, get shot and not fly back like a hundred feet. Uh, right. uh, yeah, that I mean that, that, and that Doom guy, he can run real fast. If, if oh, that Doom guy. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> he's about 60 mph, I'd say. Yeah, he's going like a locomotive. Um, and in Growl, you can just lift up cars. And in uh, in in uh, what's what's that game called? I don't remember. There's there's a another se uh, what Secret Agent? No, Secret Special Cops. Special Cops. <laughs> Crackdown. <laughs> no, it's some <laughs> some sort of. It's a, Special yeah. Cops is amazing. It's, it's, it's a beat em up, but it should be called Special Cops. Anyway, you can pick up pillars it, out of the ground. Is it Dynamite Deca? I think it's called Special Cops. I really want to play Special Cops for hey the rest guys, of my life. Hey guys, how cool would it be if there was a Crackdown sequel called Down Crack? <laughs> it wouldn't be as cool yeah. as Special Cops or Super. What if, what, if, what if it was called Special Cops colon Down Crack? If it was called Special Cops colon Soup Run, I would never play another video game again. Yeah, that'd be yeah. pretty good. Soup Run? Bong. That's the end of that one there, guys. Well done on the sound effect, Tim Rogers. Yeah, I hit it. <laughs> I smacked right. that button pad. Uh, topic number four. four. Number 45. Number four, five. If not a game developer, what do you Fun. suppose uh, Tomonobu Itagaki wanted to be when he grew up? Uh, he went oh. to law school, so mm -hmm. lawyer. No, I know what he wanted to be. Uh, you know those guys that wear a, a shirt that says FBI? And it says female body inspector underneath it. Yeah. That's, he wanted that's, to actually do that. He wanted to actually do that. Like he saw the shirt and thought that was a real thing. He's like, no, this is what I need to do. I'm going to yeah. join the FBI. That's why I'm going to law school. I'm pretty sure that Tomonobu Itagaki is about as asexual as a Care Bear. You know, one of the ones that's not pink or one of the, ones the other colors. One of the ones that's not in fan fiction. Yeah, yeah, one of them's. <laughs> one of them's. Are, uh, I, I don't think that that's accurate. But nah, I don't know. I've talked to the guy enough times. He's 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 a weirdo. He's just a weirdo. He's a I don't know what he's trying to do <clears throat> or prove. He, he had a really either. he had a really cool game that Devil's Third game. It's a shame about that. What whatever happened there? Devil's Third. I don't THQ know. THQ happened. Yeah, got darn THQ. One Someone's of those guys just got. Up. Man, I'd pick it up. But I don't. I, I'm not strong enough. Yeah, you don't have the the upper body strength of a video game character. So That's you right. can't pick up that game. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. That's that's yeah, that's the end. I think he probably wanted to be a mechanic. I just get that feeling. I don't know why. Uh, he's got a good. Uh, he likes he likes the feel of uh, stuff moving. So yeah. I guess he'd probably work on an engine. But I'm 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 pretty sure the answer is lawyer, though. I'm pretty sure that's actually the factual answer. Convenience store manager. Fashion yeah. designer. He would yeah. be one of those minimalist fashion designers who only cares about the way the fabric uh, feels. Just making making fabric that feels good, not look you, horrible. Where's all that stuff that looks like it feels awful? Yeah, I know, but I think that's part of his attitude. I bet at home he sits around in a paper Star Trek jumpsuit made out of like like Chinese calligraphy paper. I can confirm this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it like... Because, I don't know, man, I played that Ninja Gaiden 2 a whole bunch. Have either of you guys played Ninja Gaiden 2 on the on the Xbox 360? Nah. I played it on the Nintendo Entertainment System. No, you didn't. I'm yes, talking did. about... I'm talking about... Three, yes, I did! I'm talking about 3D, 720... Ancient Ship Ninja of Gaiden. Doom, okay? Ancient God. Ship of Doom. Tim, That's actually what, not what it was. Wasn't that the one where we, uh, we, we went into that meeting room with that... That was uh, 2, yes. 
Yeah, with that with that British journal journalist who asked if that, the game would be 1080p. Will it be 1080p? Will it? <laughs> and then and then and then uh, he, he actually said it in almost exactly that voice. And then like an Italian journalist <laughs> or something like that asked his important questions about uh, uh, w- how many costumes there would be. Where, it whereas seems like the game is pretty violent. Oh yeah, they were talking about violence and like. Don't you think that violence is bad? Did, did I like, share I the know, story of, the, of the, the uh, last Unreal 4 demo I went to and the idiotic question that came out of a journalist? No, I, I don't remember. Okay, so um, have you guys been keeping up on the Unreal 4 like tech demos? They, they've shown two of them so far. Like, they're oh, like, I've, been, I've been keeping up on it with an emphasis oh, on the up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like the, the Pixar movie, yeah. Um, so uh, they... They had that new one, which was like you know, sci-fi stealthy guy does cool stuff, and there's sci-fi stealth, stealthy guy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so um, we were at GDC, and it was you know, Mark Rain was showing it off, and like they have a bunch of journalists in the room, and it's basically did Mark Rain make it rain? Uh, but no, but he sang Chocolate Rain, which was r- weird. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. So he shows the demo, and I think it's the same pitch he kind of gives, you know development partners. It's like, check this out, this is what we're doing, blah. So he, he shows that demo with the sci-fi stealthy guy, and uh, he's like, okay, any questions? So someone in the back immediately raises his hands, like, just has to ask this question. He's just, he's just dying to know. And he asks, so was that in the same universe as that demo you showed last year? Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> trying good question. To, trying yeah. to detect out a possible connection to a future <laughs> IP? Is that what he was doing? Oh, maybe, yeah. but I mean, they've made it expl- It's just a tech demo. It's just look at what Unreal 4 can do. You, huh? know what, you know what that guy is? That guy is the Inspector Gadget of video game journalism. <laughs> well, so, he, like, Mark Green didn't even try to like be like, maybe. It was just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he should have looked at him and went, what? <laughs> but, uh, Ripped uh, off yeah. his shirt, yeah. So to get back to Ninja Ninja Gaiden too, right? Sorry, that sorry. game is great. Like, but m- maybe not the game so much as the uh, the experience of playing it. The, the very visceral physicality of it. It's very connected and it feels really good. And the guy that we talked to in that quote unquote interview yeah. session, yeah, Brandon, he's the director of Ninja Gaiden Three. Huh. Right? So here's what you want to do. Like, if you if you ever want to see what I, I think Tomonobu Itagaki's expertise might be is play Ninja Gaiden 2 just five minutes. You know, there's a demo of it on the Xbox 360, right? Mm-hmm. And then play the demo of Ninja Gaiden 3 and... See what's missing? Yeah, there is none of the flavor. In, in just, just slashing the sword, it's just all gone. That's too bad. Like, and it's like that's what I think he did and that's why I think he'd be a pretty cool uh, lawyer. Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I just I just remembered the thing that made the the PR lady stop me because uh, I was ask I was asking questions and she wanted to get to the Italian guy so that he could ask how many. Because you asked about the birds. No, it wasn't the birds. No, it was I asked um, how did all these ninjas get to Europe? Like who's flying all these ninjas over there so that he has to go <laughs> defeat them? And the guy was like, uh, uh, uh. We're, like, not we going to, we're not going to talk about that. Okay, so the final answer is he would be a lawyer who also... Inspects breasts. Sti- no, also styles the hair of his client. Of breasts. Uh, while, during the court. He's, like, he's during, during the court hair. case. He... Okay, yeah. so he's, 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 he's a Phoenix he's, Wright opposing attorney is what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, he's, but he's also he's, he's hairstyling yeah. during, during the... The case during the court. yeah he's he's the hot new prosecutor whose gimmick in Ace Attorney is that he styles your your his, your uh... he styles his client's hair yeah yeah <laughs> there you go uh, that's, who's, that's who's next it's me it's yeah, you you're yeah. next flop one out there man just do it all right what would be the vest the vest the yeah. vest <laughs> that's cool um let's uh, I want a question famous, about vests famous instead vest now video games best um best, yeah. what would be the best video game to set in a one to one scale replica replica of our solar system this is why I should read the questions beforehand so I don't stumble all over myself yes, you could at least have the words <laughs> like a oh, oh, one to one replica of our solar system yeah like, what would the best so, game be yeah so well there there was one game that was you know kind of similar uh to that. It wasn't really our solar sy- system. It was just 
a solar system, but it, it itself was called Solar, and it was a game where you're like a little star, and you have to absorb asteroids and not get hit by bigger things, and then you can become a planet, and then you can get uh, other small, you can get moons to orbit you and other planets and stuff, and then life forms on there, and you can use your your life to create um, like a battle force, and you can go attack other planets and stuff. That was kind of cool. That sounds pretty good. I mean, the, the first thought I had was something like that, um, just because I'm thinking of the solar system, and it's like, well, you can't be anything smaller than, like, a really large planet because there's just a lot of dead space if it's a one-to-one -one replica. Yeah. And even then, like, that planet's got to be moving real darn fast to get anywhere Yeah. Uh, in, in, in an amount of time that's less than, like, a week, right? Yeah. Um, well, we, we, the rules don't have to be the same. It's just the... Well, it's a one-to-one -one replica. So that means that the that the the space between objects is literal. Yeah, but we could also do like it would be great to have, you know, Cowboy Bebop with all the ta with all the planets having colonies and stuff. But it's 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 a cur it's a one to one scale replica. But there are jump gates, and you could go fast in a in a, sure. in a spaceship, and you can visit the colonies and and listen to jazz while you're. Glass. Uh, well, your ice clinks and your whiskey glass, <laughs> and you, oh, you, man, you the old shed a silent clink. tear. Whiskey uh, clinking. Well, you you don't want the clinking in your game, though. No, I don't. I don't want it. But I'm not. It's it's not. I can't. I can't just think you. about what I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, about... then, even even then, it's like, well, why why replicate all the dead space then if you're just warping around? Uh, because you got to make room for the sequel, Dead Space Two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I felt that coming as soon as that Dead Space. I was like, Brandon's gonna say so something. So it's like with Dead Space Two, where they just like there wasn't enough dead space. Yeah, we have no, all this leftover space. I think I think the thing was, you know, they it's it's like when you're when you're a kid and you're you're typing stuff and you just use one space, but then your mom is like, no, you use two spaces to be more professional between your sentences, <laughs> and so then you do Dead Space Two, but then you grow up into adulthood and realize, wait, nobody real actually does that. I'm going to go back to one space, and that's Dead right. Space 3. So, yeah. <laughs> that's three dead spaces. So, yeah. I mean, any, anybody who's ever heard the term dead space or dead air, uh, bef when that game came out, weren't you just confused? I mean, you guys all worked in publications, and uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you learn about design and magazine mm -hmm. layouts or whatever. It's like, you hear the word dead space, it means... It, like there's negative space means a negative space, right? Like yeah. that's you use negative space, but dead space means it's 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 useless, right? Yeah, but I actually thought about sci-fi immediately. Why <laughs> title no. a game that though? It's a really it's bad space, title. and things are dead, and that's all it's I need. Like that's it's that's fine. a word some people have kind of heard. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, I, th I think most people have heard the word good. dead and space. Yeah. It's like, but then used together. They're like, some people might have kind of heard that together, but now we're giving them a new meaning. That's good enough to make yeah. it. Yeah. That's basically a licensed property at this point. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, but I think it was a public domain licensed property, like. Um, oh yeah. Like, like Zorro. A PDLP. Yeah. Pdulp. Where are all the Zorro games? There was one. I, you know, I almost got Mastiff to make a Zorro game because I was like, look at all these public domain properties that exist. Did uh, they not want to do jerk. it because of uh, there was no connect yet? Because uh, people, people want to draw the Z. Yeah, they want to draw that Z. Yeah. But there was a Wii at the time. And I actually the Wii, said... The Wii couldn't handle the Z. Pe people want to draw that Z. <laughs> the, Wii runs out of, the, Wii, the Wii runs out of RAM like on the second line. You do the one across and you do the diagonal and it just kind of runs just, out. Just tape a, tape a third GameCube on it. Ah, that could work, yeah. That would yeah. do the other line, yeah. That's the other line. No, you would have to tape the GameCube to the side of the TV for that to work. Yeah. There but where's go. it getting yeah. the RAM? Is there RAM in the TV? I don't really know how TVs work. The TV yes. amplifies. I it see. ramplifies. Oh, oh, like so the the proximity <laughs> to the TV versus the game console ups the RAM, yeah. So a yeah. game set in the replica of the solar system, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
I would you say just fifty seconds. Go. I would say just make it a really big game of checkers. Is what I would say. I would say make it a really big game of checkers. Just okay, I will. That covers the whole universe. Maybe I will do that. Just put a square on every star. No, wait. Yeah. <laughs> just tile it yeah. with checker squares. <clears throat> okay, what about all the zodiac symbols come to life and they have to fight? What about the dozy axe? Wait, the the the, do, the dozy axe. If you switch the letters the, around, dozy axe. Wait, did they get the name Zod from Superman from Zodiac? I don't know. I, I don't know, but they definitely. Um... You have to fight them in Last Alert on the on the Turbo Graphics. And Zod would be a great name for a kid. Bowie the Zods. I don't even know what that means. That <laughs> what I just said, but it definitely what? is a line. Yeah, the, That's a line from Last Alert on on the Turbo Graphics. It it's I, I, I Bowie I the Zods. Yeah, Bowie. Yeah, Bowie is the name of one of the characters, and the and Zods. The Zods are the name of the enemies. Are the enemies, and they killed this guy. Bowie. And, wow. The Zods. Yeah, it's 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 like voiced by some Me. dudes in the office. It's Man, great. Last Alert <laughs> is awesome. It's a good game. And the Office right. is a good show. That's a good uh, show to get voices from. Exactly. That's a good, yeah. And that's a perfect segue to our next question. All right, let's have it, Tim. The next question is, <laughs> what is the seven-year itch of video games? And it's uh, worth pointing out the seven-year itch, for those who don't know, is, is a movie with Marilyn Monroe in it. And it, I, re- uh, I remember the band Seven Year Bitch. I don't. Seven I don't Seven Year Itch uh, refers to how apparently at the time of the film's making, uh, seven years was the recorded statistic by psychiatrists or amateur historians or whoever. The seven years was about how long it took for spouses to uh, start hating one another. Sure. Okay, and, and that's the plot of the movie, I guess. That's sort of the plot of the movie, <clears throat> and it is the movie is known for having a scene uh, in which Marilyn Monroe walks over a subway vent and has wind oh, come sure. up and blow her skirt into the air, and she has to yeah. hold it down. So, uh, so, it's, so that's Half-Life what, has a lot of that sort of thing. Uh, gusts blowing stuff up. Yeah, like Gordon Freeman's skirt just pops over his head. I, think, I think Quake, Quake has those jump Quake. pads that you jump on and you bounce up really high. That's the word of like that, but maybe we could be looking more at a uh, just what is what is an I, the the video game equivalent of such an iconic image. So it, it's it's mm. nice because well, that, that contains such it such an iconic thing. I, yeah. I, uh, I guess the the mushroom power up in in Super Mario Bros is pretty icon oriented. I just saw yeah. one of them, uh, the green ones in in Krakow. On the side yeah. of a building. But I, 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 the function I, of it, though. Okay, go, go ahead, Frank. Well, I was gonna. I'm just thinking of the imagery of like it's just such a clear image in your head, right? Of of the skirt blowing up, and the first thing that comes to mind is for me in video games is Link holding an item over his head. Oh That's man, that is a good one. That. Mario giving a peace sign at the end of a level in Super Mario World. Two. Yeah. Well, those are two things that I'm unfamiliar with, so. Uh... Oh, you've uh, seen Link hold up an item. Like when he gets an item, it goes do 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 do. I have an actually. Oh man, seen that. I know what I know what it is. The iconic. I know the sound. The though. iconic thing. This is definitely it. We're all gonna agree. The the. Okay, I'm lolling now though. The uh, yeah, you the, just uh, ruined the joke. Woo! The uh, the video game equivalent of an iconic image such as uh, Marilyn Monroe's skirt blowing up is easily bonk bashing his head to helicopter <laughs> through the air. That's definitely what it is. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, that's right. That's, that's really the end of that question, I guess. Uh, man, this is actually <laughs> this is a good question because yes, it, it, it is a subversion of the what is the Citizen Kane of games, and uh, and it's like Citizen Kane is renowned for its uh, mechanical craftsmanship in addition to uh, its big themes, yeah, and its use of cinema as a, a tool in addition to. Being a good narrative, whereas the Seven Year Itch is uh, most people all they really know about it is that it's got that scene with the skirt blowing up. That's yeah. That. So is it? Is, are there quite an interesting question? Well, okay. How how about uh, it in that Spec Ops the line? Everybody knows that Speed it's got cops. Some, 
some narrative weird thing in it, and the rest of it is just like as a video game. I'm well, playing. that's I, I, I mean I, I was gonna say the same thing, but about Bioshock, like Bioshock's just that one scene where the where you find out like oh my god, the guy was controlling me the whole time. Yeah, that uh, wait, that's Bioshock. That's what yeah. I just said. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you said um, Mass Effect. Maybe but that also has that stuff. amazing set design and uh, nice visual world. It's sure. Got big, it's got the big daddy in it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Like, when but I they, remember they, Bioshock, it's just like, okay, the whole game was just for that one moment. Yeah, well, I didn't I beat it. it, so. The big daddy is a is a big image, I guess. Yeah. Even yeah. though, you know, you might not have played the game, you might know the big daddy. He's a guy in a deep sea diving suit and he's 10 oh, feet tall. What other games have like that one iconic sort of defining moment? I mean, Final like, Fantasy 7, but people have pl- yeah. everybody lots of people have played that though. I feel I, like I almost said everybody. Like if you've played through Eco, I feel like the 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 point where they take where they separate you two was like a big moment that I don't know, that's like the one thing that stands out when I remember that game. Hmm. I feel like uh, a- Eris getting stabbed through the back. With oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. If yeah. you haven't played yeah. Final Fantasy VII, you might have seen <clears throat> know that. that, yeah. But, hmm. I-, I think that's a-, a pretty good one because it's it's one that sort of permeated that culture, even, even for people that haven't really played it. They're yeah. generally aware of that thing because journalists always talk about it and whatever. How about... Um, Ring King, that boxing game, where nice. specifically on the Nintendo version, uh, between rounds, uh, the way the players are animated, it looks a little bit like there's uh, there's a little bit of uh, action happening between the uh, the uh, coach or whatever and the boxer. Ranking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I right. Saved, I saved that one for Thanks. you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, but I think I think maybe ideally, maybe maybe what we're looking at is. Uh, like victory poses from Street Fighter. Yeah. Maybe maybe those like or or you know stuff like that does stick with you. I think games are Yeah. I think games Guile have, combing his hair. Yeah, but yeah. it's not like when it's not like the guy in the background know, of Guile stage doing the really long jerk yeah. motion with the the summer sausage jerk off that So did. I guess we should just talk about video game animations that look sexual but aren't is kind of where this is going. That's that, that's one that we <laughs> get to. Do we do we want to one up this question cuz we're at 6 minutes? I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't sure, know. sure. I, I I think I think this is a good question to one up. Well, okay, mm-hmm. let's let's one up it which but, uh, was wait, wait, which one was that? That was uh, man. As soon as I say, um, one up the question, and the audio froze for me. Um, so I don't think the Street Fighter poses is it because I don't think that that's like I don't think that's like a a, a general audience knows that moment sort of thing. Like like yeah. like I mean the, another film equivalent would be you know the line play it again Sam for Casablanca, which actually isn't said in Casablanca as we all know, but like people know that line and they're like oh Casablanca. Right, so uh, seven year rich, I think, is the same yes. thing. He's like, oh, the the Marilyn Monroe skirt. So, uh, hey, what about what about the um, the exclamation point on top of enemy heads in, in Metal, Metal Gear, Gear Solid? That's yeah, I, Gear I, Solid. I think I think what we're because discovering. I know that, and I haven't played it. So I think what we're discovering here is that uh, video games haven't really graduated beyond the uh, one, you know, iconic image sort of thing, or the yeah. one like like the the still image. Uh, like I, I would think, like a Shoryuken in, in Street Fighter, like or a, a Ryu throwing a fireball. Yeah, you know, just like those little things. Like people can, people have seen that. They they've seen the pose of a guy throwing a fireball. Yeah, even and if I, they I, haven't. I, I, yeah. even if they're not like a tournament level player of the game. And I keep getting stuck on on trying to find pieces of of a narrative in a story that stick out. But maybe maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree with that. But uh, it, it made me realize that like it's really hard to find those moments because people so rarely actually play through the entirety of a game that uh, you know those moments don't really stick out so much. That's all I had. Bong. Yeah, I gonged yeah. It right there, I gonged, yeah. It. gonged it, gonged it up. You okay. liked it. I love that gong. Thank you so much, Tim. So next question is from me, uh, and that is if not a oh wait wait that's the last one. <laughs> all well, right, ready. Choose four video game symbols to appear on your family coat of arms. Oh. Huh. 
Brandon, what happened? The mate, the mate from Bonk. Yeah, the mate right, from Bonk. <laughs> from Bonk's Revenge, specifically. And then, so the, that's the upper left. Then the lower right is the turkey from uh, Streets of Rage. Yeah. And the <laughs> fish foods. <laughs> The upper then the, right. the the cherries from from Pac-Man, right? Miss Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. And then uh, the the fried egg enemy from Burger Time is the sure. <laughs> I, think I think everyone can enemy. agree that that's uh, that's really all video games are as those four things. Yeah. Those four. Man, I definitely would not have no Super Mario Mushroom on there. No, no. it's too obvious. That's for jerks. I wouldn't have a Triforce on there either. I'd have you a one of you would, you jerks. I, no, I wouldn't have no Triforce. I'm not. Nah. I'm not you, you think I, I, I am like a Zelda fan or something? Come on. I, I'd have a picture of that guy who calls himself Triforce and is always at the head of every line for Nintendo launches. Yeah, that is there guy. A guy that's that. Yeah, yeah, huh. he's basically video games. So I'd have him. <laughs> video no, but, games. But really, what yeah. would we have? Well, I, so um, are we answering this individually? I bet we probably are, because. Yeah, go for it. Go um, no, for I, it. I, I, well, I don't think we're going to agree. And if it's a coat of arms, it's our families. Yeah, it's I, I, yours. Well, what's yeah. the Sheffield family? No, what's, what's the Insert Credit family, though? I think that's a more interesting Insert Credit? Thing. Yeah, the Insert Credit family crest. Sonic the okay, Hedgehog then, ring. A Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic, ring. Has Sonic the Hedgehog one. ring. A treasure, yep. The treasure box. Yep. I agree. Um, what do you mean from the treasure logo? From the treasure logo. Okay, that's good. Um, and... Uh, the Two Hudson B. Things. Hudson B. <laughs> Hudson B. Heck yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hudson B would be cool. Um, would be cool. Hudson B. Cool. And then the, the triangle button from the PlayStation controller. I like that triangle. Yeah, That's it's a, a good, good one. Triangle. And it's and it's it's optional in so many games, which uh, which indicates that we want more. Yeah, and it's also the I'm gonna open a car door button. It's true. Which is something all of us have done. Yes. I love I love opening a goddamn car door. Sometimes yeah. I like closing them. They make real satisfying sounds when you close them. Yeah, they really do. The sound design on some of those cars is just amazing. Donk. Good old car door cars. You know, I joke, but that probably is a designed sound in some ways for some oh, like, sure. luxury cars. Like there probably are people who work on just the sound of the door closing. What about the tomato from Kirby, with the M on it? I'm not familiar with the tomato. I'm not either. Kirby. Yeah, I don't really like that one either. I'm just okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I think we're all with, we we all agree on the Hudson B, right? I do. Uh, uh, I should sure do. B. It's a B. It's I B. agree with the Hudson B because of all the fantastic Hudson games. When we were thinking about today about the be- thirty best uh, game companies of all time, um, I was gonna submit Hudson actually because of their. Uh, they just did some fantastic work back in the NES yeah. to PC Engine era. They were just quite a video game company. I actually suggested okay. that and and said that you should write it, so that's good. How about know. instead of the Hudson B? Uh huh. A bomb from Bomberman. I'd rather have the Hudson B. Hudson B encompasses all of the Bombermans. I, th- I think I think Hudson uh encompasses the sort of the spirit of insert credit in many ways. I think that's why, like, you know, and all that it entails, like the PC engine and, and you know, cool video games and, and stuff that's kind of obscure and dead now, you know? Yeah. Obscure and dead. Um, I think mine would be a Sonic the Hedgehog ring, a Sonic the Hedgehog shoe. Mm-hmm. Another Sonic the Hedgehog shoe. Right, because he's got two. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then Amy. And a, cha- and a Chaos <laughs> Emerald. No, I, don't want any, I don't want any people on my god darn coat of arms. Amy's not, not a people. Shoes. She's a people. <laughs> Actually, no. No, I don't, I don't want the shoes either. I think I just want the Hudson B. <laughs> <laughs> the Hudson B. I mean, I guess you do have to have an animal on the coat of arms, right? Yeah. That's, that's a Absolutely. Yeah. You've got to have a weapon, probably. That's true. We don't have one of those. Maybe, maybe, maybe an iconic Castlevania weapon, like like the cross boomerang thing. Yeah, or the whip. Yeah, but, can, uh, can you can you represent the whip as a small like square icon? They they do, and it looks really they gross. It it looks yeah, like yeah. a line with like a little blurb after. How about how about from it the old like Castlevanias a that got chewed up by a dog? How about from the old Castlevanias when you upgrade your whip with the Roman numerals two and three? What about the three? 
Mm. Yeah. That could work. Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, I guess we could have... I would want a Bomberman bomb, a Hudson B, a Sonic ring, and... Uh... What so you you, you want to go double Hudson here. Double Hudson? I think a Bomberman bomb is a really good weapon. I think a double Hudson sounds is. really dirty. <laughs> yeah. How about how about the four piece from Tetris? The, and no the, the no tre- no treasure box for you, Tim. Well, I mean, you know, if we're doing a video game company logo, I mean, treasure's cool and all. Treasure's my favorite. Well, everything. it's just it's just it it's not the. We need a weapon. I wouldn't think of it as the logo per se because the logo is really. We the need bit a weapon. That says treasure. We need a weapon. The box is just well, uh, exactly. yeah. It could be the Bomberman bomb. It could be the. The Castlevania Cross. It could be. Uh, it could be the Shuriken from. I think Bomberman um, bomb Shinobi. is the best. I think Bomberman bomb is the coolest weapon to look at. So, um, I, I have no problem with going double Hudson on it. Sure. <laughs> so we can go. We can go. Uh, we, we got the B. We got the good. bomb. I'm good with double the B Hudson. And bomb. Um, Sonic, Sonic ring. ring. Sonic ring, and yeah. then uh, what's our fourth one? Did well, we it was Treasure Box. I said, but Tim got antsy. I like Treasure Box just for the visuals of it compared to the other three, though. Yeah, and also it's just, hey, here's Treasure. We like them. Yeah, so I think I think that's a four. Can you agree to that, Tim, or are you gonna you gonna? I mean, I guess that's cry? okay. I okay. guess that's okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could you could just have like some fruit, like from Miss Pac-Man, and well, we don't have any food on there, do we? It could also be a Bond Guy reference. Okay, let's do the pretzel from Miss Pac-Man. Pretzels are pretty no, good. No, no like... pretzels. I love pretzels, <laughs> but man. I like I pretzels. Think... Well, uh, apparently this is going to go slightly unresolved because we've gone way over time. Yeah. So, it should uh... be a Chocobo, a Sonic the Hedgehog, and two Sonic the Hedgehog shoes. That's it. We're done. <laughs> good. We're done. Okay. okay. Next question is Brandon Sheffield. <laughs> if, uh, if there were a king of video games, king of video what games. would his or her duties be? I'm gonna say for her in there because we wait. Can is it play. wait? Is it Why is not? it duties or duties? <laughs> it's duties. Like like what would what would it's it's a bit scatological. What would it look like when they take a dump? Wait, if it was duties, are we talking about Call of Duties? Yes. So which one's Modern Warfare Two? Probably. Well, no. It's it's what would they look like? So the answer is a uh, kind of brownish. Yeah, like kings. I think just have normal duties, right? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Shigeru Miyamoto is the king of video games because he's the figurehead that everybody talks about. Yeah. And his right? duty is to make pretty all right video games, right? Yeah, his his duty is to, uh, I mean, he doesn't even, he's not hands-on anymore. He's a, he's a producer. Yeah. Right? So he just kind of walks in and is like, oh, yes, I approve. Actually, yeah, within Nintendo's walls, he kind of is the king, right? He just kind of yeah, walks yeah. around and is like, no, do this. Yeah, yes, but... good, but do this. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll oh right. And if we're talking about his duties, but I- Iwata uh, Iwata is the one that you know knights people and uh, and such. So you might have to put no. Them... Iwata's the prime minister of video games. He actually does the the executive managerial duties where where Miyamoto just kind of walks around and. Uh, but I feel like Miyamoto is more of the vizier or something because he's he's uh, inspiring people. He's giving them magic buffs. Uh, magic buffs. Yeah. But hmm. yeah, I feel like the king would be someone who's even more removed, like like Yamauchi was, uh, where he's just like, I have the money, and I'm going to allow you people to do things for me as long as you pay me tribute. Now, I think we got to compare it to kings of other media. Uh, we know who the king of pop is, that's fine, but then uh, I think a closer comparison would be the king of cartoons from Pee-wee's Playhouse. Uh, oh, yeah. man, that god darn guy was awesome. And the, the king of cartoons, what did he do? He just kind of showed up and played a public domain cartoon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the equivalent of that? Shigeru uh, Miyamoto. <laughs> <laughs> he comes into your house and gives you. Um, it would. Uh, who would? What would that be? I mean, it'd be Steam. Steam is the king of games. Yeah, Steam. There you go. <laughs> Gabe. Congregate. Gabe is the king of games. Gabe Newell. Yeah. 
He even looks like a king. He's fat and bearded. <laughs> Y'all remember that time uh, when uh, it, it was it was one of them GDCs or or something, and he won an award, and he ma- and he he flubbed what he was gonna say there, and uh, yeah. he goes up and he's like, "Before I talk, so before, whoa, I just flubbed it. Yeah, wow. But, but wow. Before, nice. before I start to talk, I have a beef." I mean, brief thing to say, <laughs> and uh, <That's> amazing. <laughs> and ev- and this was when everyone was still uh, using Picto Chat at conferences. Yeah, we. That's right. We were Picto chatting each and other. So, so we were we were all in a Picto <laughs> Chat room, going, "Lol, he's hungry." Lol, lol. <laughs> and didn't, I felt, didn't someone scream I, "Boomer" when he got on stage? <laughs> yeah, on stage. yeah. That's just not nice. It's, it's not really nice mean because people are fat. It's true that they're fat. <laughs> Guy is definitely the king of video games. Got yeah, it. I think it's Gabe Newell. <laughs> Boomer. But Gabe Newell doesn't like deliver video games to you with delight unless you're considering him the face of Steam. Steam face. Steam face. Steam face is the king of video games. <laughs> Steam face is is a forgotten Batman uh, arch villain. I think I think that Shigeru Miyamoto is the king that we want. Not necessarily, but not the king we deserve. Yeah, not yeah. necessarily the king we deserve. Yeah, like we I, want, we want a king who who inspires, uh, inspires more, possibly a little bit more trust than they they probably are worth than is realistic. Yeah, you know, people, somebody that everybody believes in, the idealized king. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's like, man, Miyamoto's the best. He made all those great games, and people give him credit for stuff that maybe he didn't do. Because everybody knows that Takashi Tezuka, well, not everybody. He, he that guy did most of the work on Super Mario Brothers. He was the guy who had the idea to make Mario kind of slide to a stop and and jump higher when you hold the button down instead of just press the button and make him jump, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, and and it's arguably stuff like that that made Mario popular. Mm-hmm. Right, it's because it it doesn't feel. There are a lot of other similar games, but they don't all feel that way. So Miyamoto is kind of a uh, he's he's the 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 vessel for all of that uh, legend, you know. Yeah, he's, he is the the just kind of the guy that everybody puts it all on. Yeah, well, t- I mean, I guess taking taking credit for other people's stuff is also kind of a kingly duty. It True. is a, in general. Whether whether Expected. he's doing it. Uh, viciously or evilly or not. Well, I'm he, sure he's not. Yeah, I'm sure he's just kind of a cool guy. And if we want to talk about his duties, since he's a <laughs> Japanese guy who works on video games, I'm pretty sure he eats yeah. red meat uh, yeah. and then white so he's got, rice. He's got like ghost duties if he eats too much meat. And as a person who lived in Japan for a long time, uh, and I've seen many duties. <laughs> sometimes the toilets didn't flush. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's like red pasta is what it looks like. Well, that's wow, gross. wow, like, like, and that's it, actually where we're about to end this. It's like oh, that, wait, I want to I want to say that that it's the uh, str- <laughs> depo- deposed deposed king of a foreign nation would be Yu Suzuki. Mm. Yeah, Yuji Naka. Yeah, Yuji Naka up is what we should call him. <laughs> Yuji Naka and Yu Suzuki. Why don't they team up? Yeah. Anyway, no, so uh, no, next next bad. question is Tim Rogers. All right, this is the last question that I've been given. This is the last question that any of us are answering until the lightning round. And I'm gonna have to go here to get it. Go there to okay. get it. Oh, you guys are gonna like this. I like stuff uh, that I like. According to the Kubler Ross model, the five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Which five video games best embody? Each one of these stages. Oh boy. <clears throat> okay, S- say them one more time. I forget. Yeah. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write I'm gonna them ring down. the bell first. I'm gonna ring the bell first. Huh? Okay. okay, so the question has started. Um, they are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So let's let's start with denial. Denial. So a game in Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Is, would that be <laughs> Prince, Prince of Persia, the Prince sand Persia. of time? That game has sand in it, so it's probably Egypt, and it probably has pyramids, and it's probably a denial, right? That's right. Right? Um, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so denial. Let's be a game that like everyone likes, even though it's bad. Oh God, most of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. What's the most popular game right now? Let's just let's just talk crap about the Bioshock Infinite. There we go. Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite. Um, maybe maybe. Wow, this is a, kind of a hard question. Um, maybe a game like well, didn't didn't Stardock make that game that they really thought was going to be good, and then everyone hated it, and then they had to remake the thing. Hmm. I don't remember oh. what it was called. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's that's boy, that's that. You're dropping some knowledge here. I forgot about that. That was the thing that happened, and it seems like it would be a good example of denial. Oh, actually, wait. Rage is a good example of denial because that was a game made by the id guys and everybody thought that they were amazing and fantastic because they were at one time and then they made this rage game and it was just not good at all. And that's also a perfect example of anger, which is the next step because anger and rage. That's right. Mm. So rage is probably also the anger of video game, it's true. Yeah. So I guess we got two down with one game. Wait, no, amazing. no. Denial is definitely Duke Nukem Forever. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Deciding yeah. that we, this game is definitely worth finishing. Yeah. Let's do it. Ten okay. years. That game was in denial. That uh, If they couldn't finish it in 12 years, they should have just given up. Anger would be rage because, yes. come on, rage, right? Yeah. Done. Is, is rage even about rage? I mean, is there an angry person in that game? Well, I mean, there must be because you you start out in that game and uh, immediately you're uh, you some guy shows up in a car and tells you, "Hey, we gotta I kill all these other guys," and then you're like, "Yeah, I'm I'm on board with that. I will kill all these people that I don't know." So that's so, he's got to be pretty. He's got to have some kind of anger in him. What? So what about bargaining? Bargaining. Um, w- one of the Zynga real money games now. But you don't bargain there. You just spend. Okay, bargaining. How about Steam? Because because you get bargains. There's a lot of bargains there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bargains. If cheap ass gamer was a game, that could be. <laughs> so wait, bargaining is the stage of death where you go. Stage but, of death. But but what if I start eating healthy? You, you, well, the you probably mean away. grief. The well, the stage mm-hmm. of. They they oh, all. They, yeah. It is often also called the stages of death. So oh, right. uh like a. Uh, like it's like, what if I start eating healthy? Will the cancer go away? Right, like it's stuff like that. What what game does that? What is the video game equivalent of that? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking of something where you you feel you feel like you're gonna keep playing even though it might be bad for you. But maybe Oblivion. Oblivion. It'll be okay. Any any of the Elder Scrolls games? If you just ignore the main story and. Yeah, I, I, I had a hundred hours of fun before I even did the main objectives. It's a game like that. You know what's real cool about Grand Theft Auto is if you just don't do the missions. That's bargaining. I, I can have fun with this game no matter what. Hmm. I don't think it's stretching though. I do. Oh, uh, how about any RPG? This this quest this this answer comes in from from the outside. Uh, any RPG where everybody's like, but if you just play for 12 hours or 15 hours, it gets really good. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. So Final Fantasy 13. Final but, Fantasy 13. Final or Fantasy. is that, or is that denial? That's yeah, also that's denial. denial. I think that's denial yeah. again. I think a lot of video games are like death. Uh, <laughs> depression. You know, I I think that bargaining. You could actually have like an in-app purchase game where it's like, well. I I pay this more money, maybe it'll be a little more fun. Actually, that's yeah. That's pretty good. It's like if I pay a dollar, it'll go a little faster. Yeah. So So, one of them. I guess depression could also be one of those games where it it gets real good if you just play it for twenty five hours. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's depression. Depression. Yeah, sure. But no, depression is more about like seeing no ending. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, something else. 
I, I think I think this, Shadow, this, this is good radio, Tim. I think Shadow <laughs> of the Colossus is a good depression game. Because it sure it, is. Yeah, it's not fun, and you're repeating the same task, and you don't actually see an end necessarily. What is acceptance? Acceptance. Um, it's like, well, I guess I'm gonna die. Uh, or yeah, or a game where you're like. I guess this is as good as I'm gonna get. Yeah. Um, Sonic, any any Sonic the Hedgehog game for a Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The new ones. They just fully blindly accept death. I think, think accept. I think acceptance would be something like World of Warcraft, where it's like, yeah, I just want to grind and not. Oh yeah, be- yeah. This is my life now. Yep. You know, I I also think in a way that we could spin it the the Demon's Souls games. Uh, they're they're for people who accept death and they're just like heck yeah you know i'm just gonna go ahead and mess around in this game and learn all its stuff it's kind of the same sort of a similar impulse to an mmo or what what about roguelikes where you will for sure eventually die and you just start again and with more stuff an endless runner there's a whole bunch of yeah just and and endless runners as well i don't don't accept that (laughs) (laughs) I don't accept that. Whoa, 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 whoa what's happening here? You, you're being told that your opinion does not matter anymore. Cause <laughs> wow. Do you accept that, Brandon? Heck yeah. Well, I, I proposed the final thing for acceptance, so I'm afraid I do. Okay. Because it right, end, ends with me being right. It Rogue is no time for the uh, final uh, section of our podcast, uh, which I will... Learned. Uh, Final Tim, were you were you gonna say podcast. something? Were you gonna say something really brilliant before I interrupted you? Because I will allow it. Nah, it's okay. Okay, we're we're now on the. Say. Okay, you know, well, well, let's just do it. keep just keep talking. Yeah, good. Let's uh, do it. <laughs> All right, hey, Frank, cover hey, the lightning Frank, round. Wait, 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 yes. Frank, Frank. Yes, yes. Can we do yes. the lightning round? Ra- Frank, can we do the what? lightning round? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not prepared. Uh, yes. Okay, cover the lightning round. So. Uh, the following list is comprised of the best-selling albums as composed in music of. albums. Uh, well, that's true. I'm reading Jaffe's words here. Yeah, I know. I'm correct. just saying. It's composed of the best-selling albums of all time. Come up with a video game for each one inspired by the title alone. I like this. Nice. Okay. Uh, album number one, Thriller. A game that's really, really constantly fun. <laughs> yes. I'm good with that. Maybe you're on a roller coaster the whole time. Roller coaster is <laughs> pretty thrilling. Uh <laughs> Next one, Back in Black. Back uh, in Black. It's about a, a person who has been forced to wear different kinds of colors for all of their life, but now they get to wear a suit and go back to their boring job, and they're really I, happy. I think I think it would be a game just like Limbo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because you can't really see anything because it's all black. On a similar note, The Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, there you go. The Dark Side of the Moon is... Uh, a game where you it's one it just has a lot of those dark levels like I think where, it's I think it's a game where you're the moon and uh you go through some really rough stuff and kind of you know it's you get really depressed Tales I think from the I think side. it's a I think it's a game where uh there there are people you you go around finding people that are about to commit suicide and instead of trying to save them you moon them and make them realize that <laughs> life is not li- worth living and then you kill them I don't know if I agree with with that, but let's continue. <laughs> uh, the Bodyguard. Oh man, the bo- the official soundtrack. For it, the it's it's yeah. a game that's just escort missions. Yeah, no, it's, it's a game about it's a game about a suit of armor. Okay. Because because the suit of armor is the body. Are you are you like uh you know are you a living suit of armor? Yeah, yeah, and okay. then you're you're looking for somebody to uh to you have to jump onto people. Ah, and then you I like do, that. And then you do escort missions. Yeah, yeah and then you you escort. You're them escorting. Basically yourself, because you're yeah, escorting yeah. them, but they're inside. Of yeah, your they're suit inside of you. Okay, uh, Bat Out of Hell, which is it's already a video game. That's already a video game. That's, that, that's an endless Castlevania from Dracula's it, perspective. It's it's an endless batter. I mean, you're you're a bat. You're you're not. Going, you're hell. definitely not going to get out. No, but there's that's always that promise. Oh, and an endless and, uh, runner where you're you're a bat. It's Jetpack Joyride, but yeah. with uh, with fire. And for health, you uh, you collect. Um, pieces of meatloaf. Uh, okay, next one. Their greatest hits, which was an Eagles album. Um, I immediately so, am thinking like greatest like, hits of Eagles. I was thinking well, of baseball. Yeah, I was also hey. thinking baseball. I'm thinking like like uh, the 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 greatest batters it's, in baseball history hitting balls. 
It's. I think it's Angry Birds where you're you're shooting eagles at skyscrapers and trying to blow the skyscrapers up. Because <laughs> you're getting great hits. Oh, the eagles. All right. Saturday n- Saturday night fever. Uh, it's a game about a guy who's really really sick and it's the weekend and he wishes he could go. <laughs> well, I was I was thinking you're actually the 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 uh, germs inside of a sick guy. Huh. And, oh, yeah, so because there's not enough games that take place inside of bodies. I was thinking that, that it would be a point point and click style adventure game where you're a guy with a fever that's tr- trying to get some medicine, but a series of mishaps keep occurring that that stop him from doing it, and he gets sicker, and then the game gets all weirder looking as it goes. And on. it's a game where the story starts after you've just uh, your your guy has just assumed a seating position on an ur day. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. and, then uh, gets, and then he gets sick. <laughs> all right, ne- next one is uh, rumors. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac's rumors. Rumors. Yes. Um, boy, a game about you hear how, stuff about people. How about that? that uh, <laughs> Very good, Tim. How about that game? That that heartful boyfriend game. Uh, or wait, it wasn't heartful boyfriend. It was whichever game. Had it was like a boyfriend simulator, and it learned things that other people had said. So you'd be like, uh, "What should I do today?" And he'd be like, "Maybe you should kill yourself." Um, <laughs> you could you could use that technology to uh, to have just be like, got you're talking with a gossipy neighbor, and and it takes information about your friends and then subverts it. Good, I'm I'm sold. Come on over. And that's not a command to you guys. That's the name of an album. It's a Shania Twain album. Wait, which one? Come on over. Come on, Come on over. over. Come on over is a game where uh, uh, you're you you, it's, you you play a guy like a leisure suit Larry sort of guy, and it's basically Frogger. Because a, a a hot lady has called you and told you to come on over to her house, yeah. and you have to cross like a like a six hundred and eighty five lane highway. This always happens to me. It does. And, uh, you have to cross it uh, in like two minutes, or else she'll invite that. another guy. Right. Yeah. Or else she'll just call up some other guy and then or, then text you the word loser. Or your cell phone will die, which has happened to me. Yeah, you've got to get across the highway before the cell phone dies. Yeah. That's that's probably it. Because uh, you got to call her to get her out of her building or whatever. Um, Led Zeppelin four, and I think it's Street Fighter four with uh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin Four is a game about a blimp that's really heavy. Yeah, it's it's about a blimp, and uh, you're playing golf on it, and you're fighting other blimps to see who's <laughs> the best blimp. And it's the fourth one in the. Series, no, wait a minute, so. wait a minute. It's it's a game. It's a golf game about a red Zeppelin, and it's made in Japan. Oh, oh all right. Um, bad. Bad. Um. Uh, well, Michael Jackson's bad. Uh, I really want to make a terrible joke, but I can't think of a, a good video game for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you know what we're going to do anyway? What? what? <laughs> <Heck> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. There you go. There you, Everyone we're, just imagine we made the joke. Make your I, own I, joke. I'm trying to imagine a game about being a naughty child. How about, how about a, uh, a prequel to Bad Dudes? Oh Before yeah, you yeah. Were dudes. Before you were dudes. Just call it dudes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Good. All right. Bad. Final one. Uh, oh, final I mean, one. Definitely the best album on here. Jagged Little Pill. Uh, JLP. <laughs> uh, you're, it's it's a kind of uh, one of those. It's it's yeah. a it's a game where everything's ironic. <laughs> eh? Did you ever, did you ever eh? play that game, Irritating Stick? Yes. Where, yes. Where you have to move the stick around. It's like that, except you're a pill. And you you hate the person who swallowed you, so you're trying to get as deep into their digestive system as possible before. Is it taking place yeah. in the same body as uh, yeah, as you're, Saturday you're Night Fever? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you have to pick up pick Sequel. up irony for bonuses. You have to touch like, and then the second you touch uh, the thing, it, you explode and kill the person. But you want to get as deep as possible to uh, possibly blow up their their colon. That sounds good. Apparently that sounds means. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, <laughs> what's wrong, Frank? <laughs> I don't like what's happening. I don't know what's. I don't know your what's sound happening effects here. Are, your sound effects were broken. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that that signals the end of uh, episode 42 of Insert Credit. 42 being a number with no cultural significance that I can think of nope. at all. No. Nope. Um, Jackie Robinson. 
That there it is, Jackie Robinson. Is that, is yeah. that the number? That Catch forty two. Yeah. That's what they say, right? Catch forty two is actually yeah. is actually part twenty of the Catch twenty two series. I ah, see. yeah. Um, so as always, follow us on Facebook. That's where we hang out. At uh, I believe uh, Intercredit Podcast is the name of our I Facebook see, group. I see podcast. I, I think. see podcast. I see podcast. Um, Email us your suggestions for two upcoming episodes, one about the greatest games of all time and one specifically about the greatest Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, if you're a weirdo, games of Sega all time. Drive. Sega Drive. Mega, Mega, to, Mega, uh, Mega Sega Drive. To the to, uh, podcast at insertcredit.com. Uh, follow us all, all on Twitter uh, at names I don't really care to say out loud, but you can, you can stalk us very easily. You can easily. figure it out. Yeah. Number 108, please. All right, number 108. That's uh, one you shouldn't follow. I am your temporary host this week again, Frank Cifaldi. I'm uh, Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And, and you uh, are lost. And everyone is dead. Yeah. And, and also this is and, podcasting. And this nice. is podcasting. Podcasting. All right. Okay, we did that it. Pod, end. pod combo. We did so, it. So uh, for for those of you who are watching as opposed to listening, we are going to start answering some questions, hanging out. Good uh, 20 minutes or so. I'm going to start the timer on that in a second. Ty- Tyler Doak had some good suggestions for the... Uh, Did you guys get my Meatloaf reference? Uh, you yeah, we got didn't. the Meatloaf reference. Yes. My dad my dad listened to that album okay. all the time. Just making sure. Adam Amazing says, Dr. Mario's Jagged Little Pill. Is More like Dr. Dario. It could have been Dr. Mario for grown-ups. It could have been the twisted metal to uh, uh, Dr. Mario's Mario Kart. I'm going to use the restroom. I'll be right Missed back. Missed twiddle. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ty- Tyler Doak had a good come on over, which is uh, Scorpion is retired from being a ninja assassin. You have to. Con- oh, man. You yeah. have to convince the cast to join you at your house party. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> um, Kleptonin, a.k.a. Hot God, asked if I bought that Ending Man console, and the answer is I did not. Oh. God darn it. It was probably a Famiclone, right? <clears throat> it was a Famiclone, and I didn't need it. But yeah, you don't need I did, It was called Ending Man, so I probably should have. Um, Intergalactic Walrus says, where do you guys stand on Dragon Crown? Um, well, once I get it, I'll stand on it in my house. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to, I don't want to do it outdoors. But if you're talking about the thing where they got the big boobs on the lady characters, man, I don't know, man. It's like he's got a style, and I agree that it's not like super progressive. But I don't think everything has to be super progressive. I do think that it's too bad that he chose to uh, to kind of uh, respond to the guy that that said that he drew like a 14 year old boy with uh, some homoerotic stuff, essentially making a gay joke, Um, which is a little too bad. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, The only thing I can say conclusively is that I named all the magic in that game. What magic game? Uh, Dragon's Crown. I named all the magic in it. Oh, yeah, that game. That game looks pretty dumb. I mean... Yeah. I, I, there's that whole controversy about it. I wonder if anybody is going to bother to bring up a controversy about how the game looks like it's about as fun as <clears throat> killing yourself with with kindness. With, with by drinking, <laughs> by, it looks like it's about as much fun as killing yourself by drinking too much water. Is it's more it like is. killing yourself softly with his song. Yeah. Killing yourself softly with the song of the songs. Man, I, w- I want a game where you can kill people with uh, with his song and with kindness. Yeah. Like, that should those should be, like, names of guns or something. Patrick Miller <laughs> wants to know what to do for a cough. He says he's still sick from GDC. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm so going to tell you something. Uh, okay. Patrick I'm, Miller. I'm going to tell you something after he tells you something. Take uh, Just start supplementing with garlic. Apparently, it's really good for your immune system. Get, like, go to Target. Uh, and get like 500 milligram garlic tablets. Just start taking those. Whereas the the whole Chinese superstition about take a whole bunch of vitamin C and you'll never get sick, uh, that's not true. But with garlic, it almost is. Just take a whole bunch of it. Um, so my my suggestion is, speaking of China, go to that Chinese doctor that I went to um, last week or the right the week before I went to Poland. And get him, tell him what your symptoms are. Let him see your tongue, and then he'll give you a big package of disgusting herbs to 
cook up, and then you can uh, you can drink them, and you'll probably get better. Oh, that's a legitimate response, being that Patrick Miller lives near us. Yeah, that he, he does. That could work. He lives there, and it could work. And yeah. um, it worked for me because I had had a cold for a week, and I and I really thought it would be gone, and then it just wasn't gone. I also had a fever at one point during that cold, and the, and the dude gave me the worst tasting thing that I have had, and it made me better. And Frank, you should uh, you you said you wanted to experience that. You should. It's interesting. I'm not sick though. I know. Wait till you are. Can I go for some kind of self improvement reason? Like, yeah, maybe you could just say, "Hey, uh, I want to be cooler." Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe you'll give me herbs to be cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to. I want to drink some gross, herby liquid. I don't know. Oh, what. and and someone here, Jal Melb, says, uh, "Put ginger and coke, cook coke on stove, strain, then drink hot coke like soup." Um, or Shooting you could Star go Cafe, to Shooting Star that. Cafe and get lemon ginger coke, hot lemon ginger coke, where that is. All right. Um, any actual questions here? Vito wants to know what is the dookie of video games, and uh, actually, Ad Amazing already answered that, which is Rock Band Green Day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, come on. Duh. Lol. Lol. Duh. We can't outdo that, so we just have to move Some on. Some people are, are seem to be taking offense to the fact that I said Dragon's Crown looks as good as committing suicide. Well, okay, have these Dragon people Ball. played Vanillaware games before? I mean, I, I think Vanillaware has great art. They've got an amazing process, and I've been to their studio, and they all have Amiga monitors for complete color correctness. Like wow. it's, it's a It's a modern-day studio where just everyone has these old-ass CRT Amiga monitors. Um... For a good and reason, I, and I can yes, for a good reason, and I can respect that. However, their games lack level design completely. They're almost like the way forward of Japan, except their art is better. I played um, that Odin Sphere uh, for about five minutes because I got it for free because I was working at Sony at the time. That's about, it, wait, is is that game about? Um, uh, it's about Norse o mythology. O Odin being afraid, or is it about people being Odin's, afraid of about, Odin? Well, I was about to say, is Odin's sphere is a little bit more like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Well, see, now you've ruined my joke. I would say it's 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 <laughs> like it's like Castlevania. It's like Castlevania, but uh, designed by an adult who is whose biggest fear is being trapped in a supermarket overnight. Like, like, basically being forgotten when they're closing up the supermarket. Now you're you're trapped in there. It's like that's what it feels like. Because just the 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 network of of actions and consequences and uh, decisions and stuff in that game is just it's it's so soupy and weird. It is. And if it's you very, like it, it's kind of like wading through an action game. If you like it, I guess it's cool. You know, but like, I mean, if you want to hang out with that art and those characters and that that soup of a mechanic, you know, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, why the heck not, right? Look at this. Look at this. Uh, I, I've I've stacked my coins by width. Let's take oh, a look. I'm gonna yeah. go back over to the hangout there. Let me see that. Yeah. Boy, mine That's... has not refreshed in about three minutes. Uh, oh, you got, you you mean the comments? Yeah. The the trick that we learned before is you just you you click on show all comments. Don't have it auto refresh. Go there and then go it have it be static comments and you just manually refresh it yourself and then it refreshes faster. Okay. So ah, is that, is that, that dragon's wow. crown? Uh, that dragon's crown on Vita is that going to be uh, what do you call it? Uh, is that going to be like a cross buy situation? As they call I hope it. so. Oh uh, man, Vito says if you could prevent the HD remaking of any game, which would you choose? I think super, number one right now for me Duck is Ducktales. Uh, is Ducktales, but if it's if it's the future, I think like you know, Sega probably owns the rights to a lot of those Treasure games, and Treasure doesn't own the rights to them. I don't think Treasure has to be involved in their remaking, so I would probably prevent any of those. From being Heck remade, yeah. if they were going to be remade by someone that was not uh, Treasure, I would I would not be into that. So there. I think Sega is pretty cool to Treasure, though. I think that they'll let them do stuff. Yeah, but Sega is not really Sega anymore. So you know, they who knows? 
Sega. <laughs> you know, I, I I actually at at this point don't know if I want anything to be redone in HD. Yeah. I, there's some things like I can see doing like actually there is a fan project to do Sonic 2 in HD and uh it does look kind of cool. Cuz uh, uh, so I just looked something up on the internet and apparently that Dragon's Crown is not cross buy but it is cross save. So if you feel like buying both versions of the game, <laughs> then you can you can save it. Oh man, that's that's a nice uh Kick pa in the in the general area. Pedro Baptista says, "What kind of level design are you expecting from a street?" No, no, no. He said, "Are uh, expecting." Uh, well, I'm correcting it. What kind of level design are you expecting from a Streets of Rage kind of game? A uh, great level design. That's the uh, one. I, I wanted I've got to it in my question too. I've got it in my head how you would make really good level design in a game like that. But let's not talk about that. As totally Frank possible. Saying, as Frank was saying, there's that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 remake that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it's um, because like they they uh, unlike any other HD remake, they're drawing the art like what it would have looked like back then. Wait, are you, you talking know? about the fan one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like it actually looks like old Sonic design. Like they were really looking at the old model sheets and like recreating, you know, the Sonic of 1992. Yeah. And uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's. You know, it's an amateur effort, and there's some things that are a little inconsistent or whatever. But like that, that to me is a vision of of what an HD remake could be. I don't think Ducktales is that at all. I don't think more like Chronic the Hedgehog. Chronic the Hedgehog. Heck yeah! So I uh, and and you know, even on accident, I I think I was like one day into learning how to make games in Unity, and I made something that feels better than Sonic the Hedgehog Four or any of those modern 2D Sonics. So Four some, or... some kids on the Four. internet could accidentally make that game good enough, I think. Is uh, Four saying Fuhrer with like a weird accent? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Vito had a question that What do you want, Vito? Me. He said, if you could eliminate the fan base of any game series and make it so you and your friends, and only make it so you and your friends are aware of it without affecting release schedules, which would you choose? That's a very specific question. Wow. I, that, think, I, I think it speaks to some problems that Vito has. Yeah, I think Vito has... That's, <laughs> okay, the answer to that question, in all seriousness, the absolute, like, I, I actually have the perfect answer. The answer to that question, and I think you guys are going to agree, <laughs> right? The answer to that question, Vito is we are not your psychiatrist. That's the answer. <laughs> I was waiting for the good times. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good times. Um, yeah. Okay, so so in theory, I think what he's saying is, like, is there a game series that, that, that we're embarrassed to enjoy because of the, 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 uh, the, the weird fan base that it has so, that, so we don't, you know, fess up to it necessarily? <laughs> I guess that's the only way I can approach this. And uh, I don't have any game series for that, no. Hooray! Yeah. Pedro Batista says uh, that English isn't his main language, uh, Dutchie. And I, I, I'm I, aware of that, but still sp spelling you all the way through is a good idea. That's all. <laughs> uh, and I don't think that has anything to do with English not being Ooh. a language. Damn. Um, so uh, Trotsky says 420 took it up, so yeah. I guess... We have to. Who's the Kanye uh, West of the video game industry? It's probably Kanye West, I reckon. Yeah, yeah he's probably he's, on an app somewhere. I, yeah. I, I, I think he's uh, kind of monopolized himself in all the. Uh, yeah, he's just got to be himself. Honk. All the mediums. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out with that guy someday. I think. So wow, Ad Amazing asks Frank, "Did you get new glasses?" I did. Someone noticed. They're was like exactly the same as the old ones, but someone noticed anyway. It's amazing. Oh wait, yeah, yeah I you noticed had a thing you, about them being you had broken. broken them. Yeah, I had broken them. I have the broken ones over there. These, these are, are different because they got they got these little guys. Yeah, they got little studs in them. I saw yeah. that. You did one of the. You, you took one of those way too close to your face pictures, like yep. like your Google Hangout one, which bothers me every time I see it. Good. Like I don't need to be that close to Frank. <laughs> Here it is. I need a little distance from Frank, please. <laughs> Somebody asks, uh, will it be okay that the DualShock 4 doesn't have start and select buttons? I say, why the heck not? We don't need uh, them anymore. 
Pedro because we're going to be able to says that I should die and uh, and I will eventually. <laughs> just just hold your horses. I'm working on it. It might so, take a few years. I, I was going to say we don't need select and start buttons on a controller anymore, obviously, because we have yeah, share. I think, and I think you guys are going to agree. We don't buttons. need select and start when we can say PlayStation select. Yeah, right? that's true. Right? PlayStation Bing. start. I think it's time to bring back the run button. Xbox Bing. Xbox. I like how how Nintendo was like, yeah, we're gonna totally lull with you, and uh, and we're gonna put a plus and a minus because that's completely more understandable than select and start. I, it's yep. not really. I think that these buttons are actually kind of confusing. You've got one and two, A and B, uh, plus and minus. It's there's no clear relationship between these at all. I think nope. that's no. a dumbness. One and two, A and B. Well, I guess they're just do- going for a check dichotomy. it out. Check out. Check out what the classic controller does. You got Heck yeah, select, select on- and start. Just like That's real people. Yeah, it That's is really- interesting. I actually Wait. only just noticed that right now. Wait, so guys- like, what about when you're on a menu and you're using the classic controller and it's like plus, press the plus button and you look at your classic controller. No, no, it, no, it also there is says a plus. plus. See, there's a plus. Ah. Oh, it's plus, and then it says start underneath it. Oh, and and I guess that's there because you're using that to play the emulated games. It'll say press select or whatever. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that why it is. And the button layout is the same as the Super Nintendo. So. Right. More like Pooper Nintendo, but also you got these uh, these extra um, big buttons. triggers for pros. I saw these weirdo uh, triggers on um, Xbox 360 controllers in uh well they were Xbox 360 style controllers in Poland and they had oh, like a, they had another trigger back here that was optional that you could snap on and I couldn't actually figure out what it was for. Huh. Did Windows just start up? No, yeah. I was just celebrating the brand and couldn't figure out what the Isn't that Windows 95? No, no, no. Windows, Windows. Windows had that like harp sound. Windows ninety five. Man, I haven't Xbox that in a while. Bing Infoseek says so, hot god. I saw that. That was pretty good. But uh, Intergalactic Walrus has an actual question, yeah. which is, what is the video game of video games? Who's Who's Intergalactic Walrus? You're pretty good at questions sometimes, Intergalactic Walrus. Yeah, we want to know who you are. We want a full dossier. Yeah. Um, what is the video game of video games? Um, let's see. How about? Uh, I was thinking. Uh, they're uh, probably one of the games what got mini games in it. Yeah. Um, like, well, like, what about the pa- the 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 uh, Namco patented loading screen mini game? <laughs> Could be it. Um, but also, it's probably like Sonic Two or Super Mario Brothers Three. If we're talking about. No, so it's got to be a video game about video games. So it's got to be something like oh, Virtual Game Sega Challenge Gaga. or Sega Gaga. Yeah. I yeah. I go Sega Gaga because that's. I think Tyler Toke is correct. The WarioWare is the video game of video games. Yeah, I didn't want to say that because you hate it and I'm sensitive. I don't, I don't, I don't really like WarioWare either, but it does make sense. I thought yeah. it was WarioWare. <laughs> Wario, WarioWare-E? I noticed that some people say Mario, but they, they don't say Wario. No, Mario? Nobody says Wario, yeah. Yeah, because you know, I think it's because Wario started out when, um, when voice no. o- was already in video games, didn't it? No, he was in Super Mario Land Two, Six Golden Coins for the Nintendo was. Game Boy. That's probably mm-hmm. stupid. And there was a commercial where they called him w- Wario, Mario's new nemesis, Wario. Yep. So there you go. That's how I, I first saw him. Yeah, I, I I like that guy, Wario. No, just kidding. I think he's the stupidest video game character. Uh, oh yeah, Ad Amazing says, "What's that FPS about the video game character like Duke Nukem?" The answer to that is um, is uh, Matt Hazard, Matt Hazard yeah. eat, eat lead. That game is a garbage game. It Lord is... guys, I gotta tell you something. Okay, you should do it. Lord that, guys, uh, Lord guys, um, this uh, Dragon's Crown. Which one? This game, Dragon's Crown. There's this lady in it. Do you guys like my? Uh, That's good. My I've, got my, I've got my pants all. <laughs> Way up to my chest. Um, I, I did it as a joke when I was coming out of the bathroom just to amuse myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm gonna put them back down now. Uh, okay. This dragon's crown, that sorceress character, 
uh, that everybody's talking about. Lord, those breasts are enormous. They're pretty big ones. They are. They've they've gone beyond football shaped breasts, and they are. They yeah, they they're, are. They're about half a stadium. They are. They are anaconda shaped breasts. They are snake shaped breasts. They're you. They're they're sausage shaped breasts. It's like she's got two huge hot dogs on her chest. She, she's got a Z cup. It's <laughs> like it's it's not even physiologically feasible. <laughs> It's just weird. <laughs> Fleasible. It's, it's just beyond weird. Have you guys have you guys scoped this out? I scoped this a little. Trailer that was on this uh, the Kotaku, what, Kotaku what? thingy. Uh, uh, no. Dragons. No, I didn't. I didn't see that, but I, I had seen the character. There's the thing where the guy says Dragons Crown characters look like. You know, they're 14 years old. Or oh yeah, I, like I already kind of addressed some of this earlier. Yeah, that's well, what the question the question was about that, right? It was about the whole quote unquote contra- con- controversy as they call it in England. Controversy. <laughs> like so because uh yeah, like I, I just watched the video on the on the, the Kotaku post. Uh you, you guys can, can watch can, video. You guys can keep, On Kotaku. Yeah, on Kotaku it's ready. Video um, But like yeah, just watch that. Go and mute that sound and watch that video there. Mute and dot look, sound. Look, look at those breasts. So there's a, there's a, <laughs> I want to point out this really great comment. Here. I think Kamitani is a, uh, is a member weird. of the FBI, the, the female body inspector. This, this is beyond dead or alive. Look at that. <laughs> okay. That's, so, in, that's, in, that's ridiculous. We've got a comment from Trotsky, which I really like, which is, I say Mario sometimes, lol, I'm from New York. Like, he, he's so, he's, he, like, Mario, I guess, is so, like ingrained in him that he just thinks he just types Mario, Mario and we're gonna read it Mario. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's so. Guess what? We're not your psychiatrist. So there's that. To to that. I might so, be. Guys, our twenty minutes is up. So you want to do are one, you like, guys, one more are, question? Are you guys scoping these hot dog breasts? I'm, lo- I'm looking at them. They're just that's, jaggling all over the place. That's, that's, a, that's a little bit weird. It is a little. The the physics aren't even like remotely right. But you know you know it's hilarious. Is about half this man's studio is uh, is ladies. Like I would say it's about half. Uh, like like wh- why would anyone wear a shirt like that? Why wouldn't she just go around topless? She like, need she need like she needs to keep them from getting dirty. I guess on the bottom area, the top is have okay. A, do they have a magical purpose? Have you have you seen the Amazon's buttocks? Yeah, I saw those. She's the, she's got some ham hocks going the, on. The Amazon, meanwhile, is bizarre. Like her body, it looks like she's uh, it looks like she's she's made out of hams. It's like really weird. Yeah. Like, okay, so let's let's try to get a question in here. Yep. Yeah, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna. Have any of you played Monaco? I haven't played Monaco yet, but I'm going to. I have. It's all right. So, Played have it a couple played, years ago. Wait, have you you haven't played the, the have you played the released final I, version? I have not, no. Brandon? Nah. nah. Uh, well yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Um, okay, how about if you would go back to ninety five, how would you save the Sega Saturn? Oh. Man, that's a tough one. Well, I mean, ninety five's guess... too late to save it. Yeah. Well no it, yeah, you'd well, have to start earlier, I guess. Yeah, like ninety five is like, well, don't launch it. <laughs> um I yeah. guess I guess make a good deal with Electronic Arts because that helps for some yeah. reason. They still have them Sega Sports, but and then the other thing is, actually, you know, I guess I might say, make make the Saturn like a fantastic 2D machine like it was supposed to be, and make yeah. that kind of the the edict. And but you know that still might not have worked because well, I don't think that would have worked. Like that would have made us happy, but like that would not have yeah. excited. You People know, the magazines the at the time, and yeah, I mean that it's it's hard to remember now, but at that time it was like wow, 3D. Like it, it needs to do 3D, or it just yeah. looks old now. So Even I guess they should have gotten a better 3D chip. Yeah, they should have finished up that Sonic Extreme. They should have. That would have done it. That would have done it. Been it. <laughs> I would have. I would have uh, pipelined like four more tracks for Sonic R as well. So there's yeah. a little bit more games. It's more robust. That would have saved uh, Saturn for sure. Yeah, people uh, just didn't buy it because of that. I would have, uh, I okay. In all seriousness, around '95 is when 
you know, all stuff was stuff was in the works, stuff was in the planning. I would have told Yuji Naka to shove it mm. and not make Knights to get all those guys to make a Sonic game instead of Knights and then make Knights later. Yeah, okay. that's, what I that's, done. that's not that's not Naka so much as Oshima. Yeah, yeah, but Naka was in there. Yeah, he was in uh, there. I think that had they, if they had had the um, had they if, if they'd had yes, uh, the Panzer Dragoon series B-drag. all lined up and Saga was like ready to go uh, out the gate. Mm. I think I think if they had Panzer Dragoon Saga in like 1996, the, yeah, that 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 could be like a part of it, right? Like like we kind of need a multifaceted approach. That would be one yeah. of them. Like have yeah. the, have the really good RPG that the nerds like you know yeah. talk about to each other. Yeah, um, I'm with Tim. Like have a real Sonic game sure. in development yeah, like immediately after Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, that's, get get that's get, my precise no no sarcasm yeah. answer. Get, you know, yeah. get get Koshiro to give you a new Streets of Rage. Get all your yeah. properties out there. Get a, yeah. get a friggin' Altered Beast. You yeah, just that. go out there and you're like, we are Sega, here's what we yeah. do. Look at yeah. our Sega games that we've got. Yeah. Like, they could have applied that same graphical technology that they did with Knights to a Sonic game. It's true. And it would have been pretty good. Yeah. And it wouldn't have necessarily had to be Sonic Extreme. They could have just... They could have done, you know, the 2.5D thing would have been the right thing to do. But I, I would have uh, pulled everybody. Like, they they were all over the place. Uh, Sonic R, I know you and me, Brandon, like Sonic R. I like Heck Sonic yeah. R a lot. I think that it's the key to understanding what is good about a Sonic the Hedgehog game is you kind of give it a, a, a gas pedal. Yeah, you know? y- Yasuhara was all over that one. Yeah, but, like... I think they could have probably held, like, let it cook a little longer, mm-hmm. by which I mean, don't make it like they were developing it while the Saturn was, you know, in in the works. I think why would have those guys would have been better off making a side-scrolling 2.5D Sonic game, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. with the Knights team. They should have like all of their games were undercooked, it's all true. of them. Like Panzer Dragoon was really short. Uh, Sonic R was really short. Clockwork Knight. I mean, uh, like it, even Knights. Knights is just this. Yeah. This really limp, small. limp little half baked experience. I mean, no offense. I I think it's a fantastically interesting piece of software, but it's like they yeah they they were content. they were just they were trying to rush it all out there because they knew that yeah. they didn't quite have it and and they were worried about the PlayStation. I I wonder if simply taking more time with it would have helped or if oh yeah delay the launch yeah. just destroyed them anyway I, but I we're in 95 so we don't have that option yeah i, I mean like it's got to go out so we're like, like my my option making the case for sega back then uh if i were if i were there i'd be like look how big sonic the hedgehog 2 is look how big sonic 3 is look how big sonic look at the content in these games yeah. like sonic and knuckles is just massive there's so much stuff in that game yeah like and it's it's i i think it's a really great example of the kind of game you should have made for the saturn yeah it would like, I, i'm imagining because we're talking about like taking the knights team and making sonic right and mm-hmm. and I'm imagining a Sonic that actually has that aesthetic and maybe like the dream setting and everything, and it's like, wow, that could have been really cool. Yeah. yeah they they just they obviously didn't see it, and it's like, and it's. It, well, they didn't it's... really know what they had or what their fan base was, and and who they had to you know what they had to do to keep them. Uh, I, I mean, that's something everyone struggled with before the internet. Sure, right? of course. Yeah. I mean, they yeah they had they had built it. They didn't realize that they had built a brand with Sonic. Yeah. It's Even though that was their intention. To, like, like, bizarrely, somehow they didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, they tried to build a brand and they, they thought, maybe it didn't take this androgynous uh, purple flying court jester thing, that that could probably be our, <laughs> a, a brand too. And it's like, that wasn't that wasn't a world class brand. That wasn't the Felix the Cat uh, aesthetic of you know the accessibility, the the Mickey Mouseism of Sonic the Hedgehog. They didn't get it. Yeah. They and it's it blows my mind that they didn't get it. But it's there too, it is. It's too bad about that. 
And it's like that's probably all they needed. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of the stuff that came out later in the life cycle was when they were like, wait a second, we got to do these, we got to make these real things. And they had, yeah. you know, like Panzer Dragoon Saga and Burning Rangers and stuff. And it's just like, man, where were these before? Where were these when the system was not basically over? Yeah, like I think Burning Rangers, it's, oh, Burning Rangers is another example, if, if a, I may be so bold, of a yeah, game that's not very big. There's not a whole lot of stuff in it, but it's great while it lasts. It's It's really good, and I feel like... A game like Burning Rangers, given a little more time and pushed, and and if it were a little earlier in the system's life cycle, would be a game that a lot of people remember instead of a few. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but meanwhile, if oh, uh, Fantasy Star should have been in that launch lineup too. This oh year. yeah, yeah. There, there should have yeah. been a Fantasy Star. Fantasy yeah. Star. Like, I mean, I think with something like Burning Rangers, they could have waited a little bit if there had been a Sonic at launch time. Yeah. yeah. Lunchtime. Was, hey, Sin- and Shining, Shining Force 3 was at the end of the life cycle, too. And it's like, man, that's a, that's a really good game. But Oh, and know. also Shining Force 3's three-episode thing. Yeah, yeah. They, probably shouldn't have done, they probably shouldn't have done that. So, yeah. I mean, were they... I mean, I wasn't really paying attention to video games at the time. Um, but, you know, I've looked back, obviously. But at that time, were they trying to do something that they weren't? Were they trying to sort of catch up to modern times rather than be Yeah, they, they were trying to be like, well, we got to do 3D stuff. We got we to gotta do the, the sports license. Well, I think one thing was this. They had thought that the licensed game thing was, was important. And, there, yeah. and remember, everyone around here was like, probably FMV games are the future. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. everyone was just like, "What's?" Everyone was basically trying to emulate Hollywood. It's like, okay, Hollywood movies based on known properties are popular, so we should also have things that are based on licenses. And also, yeah, uh, you know, big, uh, big flashy stuff is cool, and movies are cool. Let's have FMV games. Let's, what I remember from that time, and and most of my video game exposure during those years was like kiosks and stores mm-hmm. um, what I remember as being and and that's maybe a good you know that's, that's a good slice of what public perception I guess is was, was what was in the kiosks and my, my recollection of Saturn at that time was look it's in 3d huh so you know you go to blockbuster and they'd be showing bug right? yeah and you play like, it and it's like this is awful it's yeah. a terrible game, but it's I like, like look, it's in 3D. Bit, but, it's not a, yeah. it, but you recognize it's not a good game. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an impressive game. It's not something that anyone's going to buy a system for. Indeed, and it's not a system like, seller. But it's just like, well, this is the one we have that's like the most 3D, so I guess that's what we're going to push. Yeah. And it kind of seems like what they were going for, and it just didn't work. It didn't work on me. It didn't make me go, wow, I should be playing video games, right? Which is... What they should have been trying to convince me of. Yeah, I I remember the debate uh, being, you know, on the schoolyard, let's say, being whether anyone should buy a Saturn or a PlayStation. And everyone was like, well, PlayStation's got the good 3D, and um, Saturn doesn't. Saturn's just old. Like, even just when it came out, they're like, yeah, it's this is a, a cr- the crappy one, and the PlayStation's the good one, because it's got the, yeah. the actual 3D graphics. And, uh, you know, I later found out that that wasn't precisely where the truth was, but that was definitely the, it was the perception. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, PlayStation's got that Battle Arena Toshin Den. That game sucks. Man, that game got all 100s from Game Fan, though. <laughs> yeah, because it was, it, you know, it was... Because those people were all on. Look cocaine. at those friggin' polygons that they got. Yeah. Yeah, there were like at least sixteen polygons. Yeah, there were like <laughs> seventeen, eighteen <laughs> polygons. Uh, okay, so uh, that was actually a really. Um, fun we really discussion. got into that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a little bonus for viewers of the YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say that, like, I mean, going with to, to close out what I was saying earlier like for example there was guardian heroes right and yeah. i like guardian heroes and i guardian know you, i know you guys probably like it too right yeah but, uh, but it's not like, my favorite but yeah okay. well okay well that's that's good i that like that that Mirage. that's good that you say you it's not your favorite because maybe it would have been cool if treasure would have not tried to make a weird beat-em-up and instead 
Can you imagine a Streets of Rage like game by Treasure? Like a yeah. straight up beat 'em up? That'd be yeah. pretty hot style. Maybe that would have sold something. But they, I mean, they, I kind of like Guardian went, Heroes, yeah. But it was me, but, me too. But you know, I had the same problem that I think you're trying to express, which is this: this why is there all this stuff? Yeah, there's they they just all the games went too weird. Yeah, yeah. you know. Which is part of why I remember it well, but that doesn't sell things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like, uh, but you you remember Streets of Rage too more probably. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Because it, it had pumping music, Pump. and it was it was just a you really, press start and you just get right into it and you're just hitting it, guys. It was a yeah. fantastically just straightforward yeah. meat and potatoes with the meat being found in garbage cans and the potatoes <laughs> being in, in imaginary. The yeah, imaginary potatoes. <laughs> it was a good meat and potatoes fighting game. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, they could have had one of those. Man, I want to make a beat 'em up someday. So Me too. Bad. I want to make a potatoes. I really huh. want to get one. Let's get some potatoes. Okay. Because I just haven't played a good one. I've already know. closed the comments and I am ready to go. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's we, go we, sign we've gone well over. So uh, I want to I want to talk to Brandon for about thirty seconds. So don't. I'm don't just going to end the broadcast. Brandon. Don't worry. I'm gonna, end okay. the progress. Bye guys. So, we'll see bye, you next. Bye.